The, the battles were fought on a bridge in Selma and with the words of Martin Luther King. They were won with the deeds of Rosa Parks and the Freedom Riders. For men like Kenny Washington and Woody Strode, who broke the color barrier in the NFL a year before Jackie Robinson played for the Brooklyn Dodgers, the victory came before the final score was posted. Just playing the game was enough. Where we are now is very much because of what some of those guys did. I think NFL's made progress. I think there's still more progress that has to be made. There's no doubt about that. Now, more than a half century later, a degree of progress can be measured. Tonight, another dream is realized. Courageous steps in Selma have led to proud strides onto a football field in Minneapolis. For the first time in National Football League history, a game will feature two black head coaches. The Vikings' Dennis Green and the Buccaneers' Tony Dungy and two black starting quarterbacks, Dante Culpepper and Sean King. We have the opportunity, I think, to really make a difference, not only on the field, but off the field as well, and I welcome that challenge. But tonight, playing the game won't be triumph enough. Tonight, the quality of their performances will ultimately override all other factors. They will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. Character and ability and talent are all that matters now. With superstars Moss, Carter, and Randall, the Vikings will be trying to remain unbeaten. Very important game for us trying to get to 5-0. And, oh. and uh, we got to go through Tampa to get that. And the Buccaneers are determined to make a two-game losing skid a distant memory. We have to go out and close the gap between us two. A marquee matchup tonight when the Tampa Bay Buccaneers take on the Minnesota Vikings on ABC's Monday Night Football. Are you ready for some football? is powerful stuff. Come on and hit it. Come on and get ready. Are you ready for some football? A Monday night party. Yes, sir. The countdown to the kickoff has officially started. There's no neutral corner in this heavyweight fight. All my early friends are here for Monday night. The Metrodome in Minneapolis. It can be as noisy as any facility in the National Football League. Tonight will be one of those nights. Full house looking on. The Minnesota Vikings ready to come out onto the field to take on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And here they go. Big NFC Central battle. We are ready for some football. I'm Al Michaels. Welcome to Minneapolis. When the season began, the Vikings figured to be a pretty good team. But this good? Think of it this way. It's only the 9th of October, yet there are only two undefeated teams in the National Football League. The St. Louis Rams and the Minnesota Vikings with young quarterback Dante Culpepper. We'll take our first look at him tonight. Tampa Bay a legitimate Super Bowl contender remember last year they came within five points of getting to the Super Bowl this year started swimmingly they were three and all but then they blew one to the Jets at home lost one in overtime to Washington last week and come in tonight in a critical early season game against the Vikings Tampa Bay Minnesota a good one on Monday Night Football. Watch the ripples change the sides, but never leave the stream. In today's net economy, companies are struggling to change, struggling with the complexities of e-business, with making intranets, extranets, and the internet work together across any platform around the world. Well, now it can all work together as to one net. Turn and face the to, to change with net services software from Novell, the power to change. For the first time on network television, the premiere of a show so riveting, so brilliant, we're not going to interrupt it for anything. Not even a commercial. I want to live. Gideon's Crossing on ABC. So your patient's gonna die. Never. Special premiere brought to you without commercial interruption by Johnson & Johnson, Tuesday at 10, 9 central.
To play along now while you're watching, log on to ABC's Enhanced TV at ESPN.com, keyword Monday Night Football or NFL.com. Spanish commentary for tonight's game can be heard using the SAP feature on your TV where available, presented by Lexus. Back inside the noisy Metrodome. Well, Dan Fouts, when we saw the schedule come out at the beginning of the year, we figured this would be a critical game for the Vikings because they would be chasing the Bucks. It's the other way around. What's going on with Tampa Bay? Well, Tampa Bay has got to win this game tonight, but Tony Denchi told us it's not time to panic, and what a great player to lead and send that message to the rest of the team. Then Warren Sapp, he leads the defense and has 22 sacks on the year. They're going to be going after the biggest quarterback in football and Dante Culpepper a guy I think is the story of the league so far. He's led the Vikings to a 4 0 record because he's given the ball to Robert Smith on the ground and thrown it up for Randy Moss in the air. Now the Bucks they've got to open up that offense tonight. They got to get the ball to their major distraction Keyshawn Johnson. They can't afford to get behind tonight. They cannot afford to lose this game. And the Bucks are noted for playing very conservatively offensively. Eric Dickerson, what about that Tampa Bay offense? Well, Tampa Bay is very conservative on offense. They love to run the football in some cases where they should throw it. Now, they do have two pretty good running backs in Mike Allstott and Warwick Dunn. When I think of Mike Allstott, I think of a 255 pound fullback, but they do use him as a halfback. Warwick Dunn is a 185 pound halfback, but he's more like a scat back. Now, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers do not have this outstanding running game, they think. But lucky for the Bucs that the Vikings have a hard time stopping anyone that runs the football. Having a hard time, but right now 4-0. And let's face it, Dennis Green is one of the very best coaches in the National Football League. More on the Viking leader as we welcome in Melissa Stark. Hi, Melissa. Hi, Al. Denny Green is in his ninth year as head coach of the Vikings. It's the longest tenure of any head coach with his current team. And now he's here to stay. Two weeks ago, he signed a contract extension through 2004. And he is a proven winner. He took the Vikings to the playoffs seven times. And tonight, Al, he's looking to get one step closer to his fourth division title with Minnesota. Well, one thing he'll try to do tonight is what everybody's been able to do pretty much this year, Dennis Miller, and that is keep your old buddy Keyshawn Johnson in check. What do you think? Well, you know, Al, Keyshawn's catching a lot of flack down in Tampa Bay, but I dig the guy. I think he's a gamer, obviously one of the five most gifted wide receivers on the planet, and I like the way he works the media, too. He knows the contemporary athlete's bread is buttered in this controversy thing, and I think he knows the drill, and I really like the way he works. What I don't understand is why he continues to disparage Wayne Corbett, who I also believe is a guy who's tough as nails. I think Corbett shows up every week, and with not quite the skills Keyshawn has, puts out and does his job and I don't understand why Keyshawn is so hung up with him but I won't let that color my appraisal of him you know why I'm a journalist and I've got a canon of ethics I got it here too and I'll be very even-handed tonight there'll be no bias we've got a game to cover damn it Al and that's exactly what we're gonna do you know you'll never be a flashlight you are the entire constellation the stars are out tonight. Tony Dungy leading his Tampa Bay Bucks into Minneapolis to face Dennis Green and his Minnesota Vikings on Monday Night Football. Beautiful night in Minnesota, largest city in the state, Minneapolis, adjoining the state capital, St. Paul. And there's a look at the Hubert H. Humphrey. Metrodome, home of the Vikings since 1982. Well, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers have been around since 1976. Look at the number on the right. They have never had a touchdown on a kickoff return. Over 1,400 returns. Here's number 1448. Aaron Stecker to take the kick. Mitch Berger sent it skyward. Stecker brings it to the 16-yard line. Good coverage. Craig Sauer making the tackle. Let's take a look right now at the team. Trying to change it all, Al. <laughs> well, nobody stops Tampa Bay 1,448 <laughs> times in a row. Nobody. <laughs> Very a touchdown in the entire history of the franchise. They start at the 16-yard line, and before they can toss it back to Warwick Dunn, we have a flag. So we start with an immediate penalty. Tony Parenti is the ref. Ball start, offense, number 64. Five yard penalty, remains first down. That's 
Randall McDaniel, the longtime Viking, now a buck. And what a way to start uh, your homecoming. We'll be back to the Metrodome. The 12th man or this crowd of about 64,000. And Randall jumping off sides. Well, Randall was sitting on a lot of emotions this week. I'm sure he would have saw what happened to Keyshawn when they played the Jets, just decided to bite his tongue. But it all came out on the first play. He could not stay in his set. He's a guy likely to wind up in the Hall of Fame after 12 years here. And then the pass is taken by Johnson. He had control, lost it, fumbles it to the Vikings. Keyshawn Johnson came down with it. Orlando Thomas winds up recovering the fumble. Just his second fumble in his NFL career. Robert Tate is number 28. He's going to reach in from behind and knock this ball out right there. And Keyshawn with a huge mistake to start this ball game. Unfortunately for Keyshawn, his first fumble was just last week at Washington. Great play by Robert Tate with a left hand, reaching in and knocking it loose and giving the Vikings great field position. So he goes four years and four games without a fumble, and then fumbles last week, fumbles here. And here's our first look at Culpepper. He starts out of the shotgun from the 28-yard line. And the huge quarterback at 266 pounds. It's like tackling a tight end. He's inside the five. How's that for a beginning? thing about Culpepper he's listed in the Viking press guide at 266 pounds it'll show you the evolution of football we always hear about the uh, Hawks for the Washington Redskins Super Bowl 17 the average weight of that offensive line was 266 pounds he's the new deal and Gary Anderson chasing George Blanda to become the all-time scoring leader makes it 7 nothing now Culpepper ran for three touchdowns on opening day against Chicago. So this is his fourth rushing touchdown of the season. The thing that Sherman Lewis, their offensive coordinator, told me about Culpepper is that he's an unusual that he's so big and athletic. We're seeing all of that right now. But he's cool. He's a competitor, and he senses the pressure without panicking. But when you have that type of speed and this type of body, one read down the field to his receivers, and then the Buccaneers are caught in a man-to-man -man pass defense. And absolutely the worst start for Tampa Bay in a game that they cannot afford to fall behind. Now watch this. As soon as he crosses the goal line, he points at me. You know, we've, we've established a bond this week, Don Tana. See that? Hey. You don't have very good seats there, Dennis. <laughs> if he's pointing the corner of the end zone. Well, when are you guys going to let me up in the booth? <laughs> We're working on it. Two more weeks. Yards. Wow, what a start for Vikings. It's the first time the Vikings have scored off a turnover this season. So Keyshawn had possession, loses the fumble, and the Vikings take immediate advantage. 7 nothing, just 24 seconds into the game. Pittsburgher to kick off for the Vikes. And the one thing that the Buccaneers said they wanted to do is get the ball to Keyshawn Johnson early in this game, get him started. He had a nice gain of 12 yards before he fumbled. Was going to get his team out uh, from behind their inside their own 20 and give them good field position. The pressure is now on Keyshawn Johnson to perform as well as he talks. As it was in the Jets game, as it was to an extent in the Washington game, and certainly tonight. Burger's kick. This is another one that goes to the end zone and will be run out by Stecker. And Aaron Stecker gets banged to the AstroTurf at the 20-yard line by Craig Sauer. Well, we met the Buck Christie and McDaniel each went to the Pro Bowl last year as Vikings, then both signed with Tampa Bay. So now after that inglorious beginning for the Bucks, they go to the ground, they give it to Warwick Dunn, who picks up the yard. Let's meet the line and linebackers for the Vikings. Chris Holvin, defense tackle, Boston College. Lance Sawyer, defensive end, University of Nevada, Las Vegas. John Randall, defensive line, it's still Texas A&I. Tony T-Bone, Crusher Williams, defensive tackle, University of Memphis. 
Dwayne Rudd, outside linebacker, University of Alabama. Kylie Wong, linebacker, Stanford University. Eddie McDaniel, linebacker, Clemson University. T-Bone Crusher, by the way, is his given middle name. On second down and nine, King under pressure throws. Intended for Dunn, John Randall had his hands on King Sure John looking for his first sack of the year. Almost got one. And what they've done is they moved Randall out to defensive end and inserted Chris Hovan, the number one pick. Here is Randall right here. And when he's out here, he's got more space to operate in. He beats the tight end Dave Moore there and almost comes up with his very first sack of the uh, 2000 season. The one thing about Randall is you know his motor never stops. Well, Chris Hovan is just like him playing his old position up front. Cumulative effect of all those double teams, though, starting to catch up to John Randall. Third and nine. King, good protection, slings it over the middle, dropped. Over the middle went Riddell Anthony, had it a little behind him. Orlando Thomas was there, and it's three and out for the Bucs. Well, that's a terrible start for Tampa Bay. They get offsides on their first play of the game. Deshaun Johnson catches a pass and then fumbles, and now on a third down, when the offensive line gives their quarterback about five seconds to throw, Riddell Anthony can't come up with a catch for the first down. Mark Royals in his 12th year in the league sends the punt to the 25. This is Troy Walters. The rookie from Stanford is taken down up at the 28-yard line. So the Vikings have the ball, and thanks to Dante Culpepper, Early at the Metrodome. Volunteers, we all have regular jobs. We can be coming from anywhere. We get a call, we need to get to the fire right now. Things that are going through our mind are the hazards we might face so that when we get on scene, we're ready to act. We need a truck that can uh, handle anything we throw at it. Four full size doors get us in and out quickly. There's six people in the cab, and there's a ton of room for cargo. Great truck. This is in college. It's time to show what you've got. If I can beat this time, cold one's for everybody. Make it a Coors Light and you're on. Oh, I can taste it now. Done. Ready, Junior? Bring it on. All that. All that. Rookie, meet the coach. The old man. Out of the way, Malone. You're never going to make a block with your center up. Keep it down. Your head up. Your back straight. Keep a leg under you. Drive. <laughs> Don't forget my beer, Junior. Coors Light, frost brewed at the edge of freezing. Like I said, Coors Light for everybody. Jensen, no hard feelings. It's not exactly my feelings that hurt, sir. <laughs> Monday Night Football is being brought to you by Coors Light, proud partner of the John Wayne Cancer Institute in their search for a cure. Ford F-Series, the best-selling trucks are built Ford Tough. Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper bottler, Dr. Pepper makes the world taste better. And Lincoln Financial Group clears solutions in a complex world. Dennis Green, in terms of tenure, number one in the league, he got this job about a week before Bill Cower signed to coach the Steelers in 1992. Now his Vikings from the 28 and they give it to Robert Smith. Gain of two. Let's meet the Viking backs and receivers. Dante Culpepper, quarterback, University of Central Florida. Robert Smith, running back, the Ohio State University. Jim Kleinsasser, fullback, University of North Dakota. Randy Moss, wide receiver, Marshall University. Chris Carter, wide receiver, the Ohio State University. John Davis, tight end, Emporia State University. You gotta love it. Carter and Smith absolutely very formally telling you what school they attended, the Ohio State. I University. thought Davis was from the Emporia State University. <laughs> Second and eight. Paul Pepper throws wide open and making the catch is John Davis. So you've got Randy Moss and Chris Gardner and Robert Smith. And if they're covered, how about John Davis? 
Well, what they did that time is they found Davis with single coverage because Randy Moss was lined up on the same side. He drew the double coverage to the outside. Here comes Robinson up late to make the play on Davis. That's 10 catches for him on the year. He had four last week against Detroit, but this ex-Buck, you know, we talk a lot about, about Randall McDaniel and Jeff Christie. Well, John Davis used to play for Tampa Bay. You think he's fired up, too? A lot of back and forth, of course. Remember, Tony Dungy was the defensive coordinator here when Dennis Green got the job and goes to Tampa in 96. Here's Smith, picks up a yard, and let's take a look at the guys who will lead the way for Robert Smith and company tonight. Todd Susie, offensive tackle, University of California, Berkeley. Corey Stringer, offensive tackle, The Ohio State University. Corbin Lucina, guard, Augustana College. Dave Dixon, right guard, Arizona State. Matt Burke, center, Harvard University. Now you add to that crew, Al, we've got Klein Sasser, or Sherm Lewis, the offensive coordinator. He's got Klein Sasser, former tight end to 272 at fullback now. Klein Sasser and Lynch meet in the hole. You better call Robert Oppenheimer. Second down and eight. Here's a draw here is Smith. And he gets taken down after a gain of a couple. For Sherm Lewis, this has to be a lot of fun. He was at Green Bay for a lot of years, comes over here. And to get the call of plays for this offense, I, I keep thinking, Dan, of that old phrase about the 49ers, so many weapons. So many weapons. And the, and the key really has been Robert Smith and his ability to stay healthy so far this year. He's closing in on the all-time Viking record for rushing. But uh, if he can run for over five yards a carry, and then you already add what Culpepper can do, that's a pretty good deal. There's a huge weapon. Empty backfield, five receivers here. Smith comes out of the game. Vikings spread it out. Culpepper hangs in, throws, caught, 45-yard line, close to a first down. The catch is made on the near side at the 45 by Troy Walters, the Stanford rookie. You know, we've talked so much about big guys. Let's talk about a little guy. He plays a big game, though, working against a fellow Stanford Cardinal alum and John Lynch. That is 5'7", 174-pound Troy Walter. There he is. The Blitnikoff Award winner last year at Stanford had a fantastic career in the Pac-10, rewriting all the records for receiving, and he gets that pass close to a first down. When was the last time you saw a wide out barely come up to the, wide, to the quarterback to the top of his numbers? That is the first catch of Walter's young NFL career. Troy picked in the fifth round. And they are just short, just shy of the first down. You know, when you've got a Dante Culpepper. Yeah, no question. <laughs> with a quarterback sneak, fourth and inches. Yeah. When was the last time a linebacker had to worry about taking a quarterback on a quarterback sneak up high? There he is. He was the number one pick of the Vikings. A lot of people were shocked. You know, the class of 99 with the six QBs going in the first round, including the one, two, and three choices headed by Tim Couch to Cleveland. Out of Central Florida, they would at least line up to go for it. Fourth and inches from the 45. Trying to draw Tampa offside. And they'll go for it anyway. They have the first down as Robert Smith finds the crease. You know, the great thing about Smitty is the, the guy never fumbles either. Not only, like Dan said, is he about to become the Vikings all time leading rusher, I think he's fumbled six times in over 1,300 attempts. And look at all the attention that Culpepper draws for that potential quarterback sneak. They, that allowed uh, Smith to make that huge collision with John Lynch after picking up the first down and picking up about five or six yards. But the Bucks were thinking sneak. And Smith got it easy. Corbin Lucina, the guard through the key block. 7 nothing Bikes. A little more than five minutes into the game. And it is caught at the 27-yard line by Chris Carter. Pulls it in right at the stick. That's not fair. Let's take a look now at the Tampa Bay defense. Tedia. That catch by Chris Carter, enough for a first down. Gain of 10 to the 27 now. Back to the ground to Robert Smith. And he gets taken down to the 22 by John Lynch, who, as usual, is all over the place early. Now, Robert Smith told me that uh, he's played against John Lynch now for about eight years. And he says that more 
uh, that John Lynch has tackled him more than any other player in the NFL. John Lynch, a former quarterback at Stanford, but when you hit like this, there's no way they could they would waste you playing quarterback. And uh, the one thing about Smith, he says Lynch is not a trash talker. He's a perfect gentleman, but boy, does he hit. And he never blinks. Those eyes do not blink. Second and five. From the 22, Lynch fumble. And Tampa Bay comes up with it. Well, the Buccaneers are not noted for blitzing because they're so powerful that front four up front normally with so much pressure, they come this time, and the Vikings cough it up. That's a bad snap by Matt Burke, the center. John Lynch there, number 47, get this second fumble recovery of the year, and the Buccaneers turn back the Vikings. 7-0 Minnesota. When I wanted to start my own firm, she was there. When I wanted to buy out my partners, she was there. And when I finally wanted to retire, she was there. She's always been there for me. I want to make sure I'm always there for her. At Lincoln Financial Group, we offer clear, understandable estate planning solutions to help you protect and preserve the work of a lifetime. Lincoln Financial Group, clear solutions in a complex world. To me, this isn't a hobby or even a sport. It's an obsession. So if I can't get out to this exact spot at this exact time of year, I may as well be bowling. Get out there in expedition from your Ford Outfitter. Outfitting you with the most far-reaching sport utilities on Earth. Ford Outfitters. No boundaries. Thursday, a thing of pure beauty, a cruel war of terror, financed by diamonds. How does something so beautiful become a weapon? The premiere of Primetime Thursday. This is Anthony McFarlane. Watch Matt Burke look and try to block him and watch the bad snap. The quickness of McFarlane and the stunt. Burke saw the safety coming as well. Now the buck. Tough time getting loose this season is tackled there by Rudd last week in fact against Washington Dunn carried the ball ten times for three yards and it's been a repeating thing Al last year the entire season 3.2 per carry and this 13 yard gain equals his longest of the season when he's in the game the Vikings are thinking outside but the Bucks crossed him up with that nice draw play again the Vikes are giving up 5.2 yards per carry on the ground It is caught by Jacquez Green, who loses his shoe, but he has been their big play guy. He's averaging 26 yards of reception. That's good for 19. Well, contrary to what a lot of people think about the Bucks' offense, Les Steckel told me when the Bucks can isolate Jacquez Green on either Dishman or Tate, he feels Tampa Bay has a huge edge over Minnesota. He's small, but he's aggressive and fearless over the middle. But when he gets loose with his 4-4 speed, he almost runs out the backside of the zone coverage. Nice tackle by Thomas. You can talk Holt, you can talk Bruce, you can talk all the St. Louis guys. Jaquez is leading the league at 26 per catch. First and 10 at the 42, Griffith on a blitz. They pick him up, but then King goes down in the arms of Talance Sawyer. Talance got his first career sack last week against Detroit. This is more of a coverage sack by the Vikings secondary because again King had a lot of time to throw. It took a while for Talance Sawyer to get all the way around the corner here working against number 79. That's George Hegeman who's in for Pete Pearson. Seven. 
Second and 15 from the 46 of Minnesota. King falls down, hands the ball to Dunn, and he makes the acquaintance of John Randall as we go down to Melissa Stark. Well, Tony Dungy did something a little bit different to try to motivate his team this week. He didn't want them to get down being three and two. So he showed them the divisions, the, the standings from last year this time. He put them up on a video screen. He showed them that the San Diego Chargers were on top of the AFC West. They thought they were going to the Super Bowl. He showed them that the Colts were in fourth place and that the Bucks were in last place. His message was a lot of teams start off slowly, but if they don't panic, you can end up making it to the playoffs. And of course, the Buccaneers ended up winning the division. And last year, each of these teams began three and four. That's a volleyball, and it winds up in the arms of Keyshawn Johnson. It's not a conventional big play by Keyshawn, but he bailed out his quarterback by staying with this ball after it was up in the air. Here he is right here, Johnson. Not sure what King is thinking about here. Tate comes over, drops his coverage on Anthony. What concentration by Keyshawn Johnson. You know, Dan, you pointed it out earlier in the season. It really is true. It used to be verboten for two receivers to go in the same area, but... That's not the new NFL. They'll run any amount of receivers into the same area. You'd like to have more separation, though, than that. 27-yard gain, and now they run green on the end of round. And the Vikings sniff that one out. String them out. Next to no gain. Five minutes to play in the first quarter. Let's meet the Minnesota secondary. Chris Bishman, corner from Purdue University. Robert Tate, defensive back, University of Cincinnati Bearcat. Orlando Thomas, free safety, University of Louisiana at Lafayette. Robert Griffiths, strong safety, San Diego State University. Well, Denny Green told us he was happy with Kenny Wright, but anytime you can bring in a veteran like Chris Dishman, you do it. Clock momentarily stopped. With the game clock operator, please reset the game clock to 512. 512. Thank you. All right, a little house cleaning. Well, Dennis Green, you know, you think back to his career, a longtime assistant. He was with the 49ers. He was also, you'll recall, the head coach at one time of Northwestern and the head coach at Stanford. And now the longest tenured coach currently in the National Football League. Second and 11. and it's incomplete. Keyshawn, the first guy to say, no, I never had possession. Hit by Craig Sauer. Uh-oh. Now watch it, Rob. Johnson jumped up, though, as if he thought he might have had possession and might have fumbled, though. Watch Johnson, number... Here's the pressure first. John Randall getting around the corner there, working on Hegeman, and pops the quarterback. When was the last time Johnny Randall saw one blocker? How many seasons ago was that? Well, that's just why they moved him to the outside. They want to get him to operate in space and get that sack total going again. He's such an emotional guy, he fires up the entire defense when he is rolling. You know, he won't touch anybody or be touched that's prior it. to the game when he's on the field. Third and 11. And that is caught by Green. And Jacquez Green takes it to the 11 yard line. And that is very close to a first down. Tackled there by Kenny Wright and Ed McDaniel. Talked about Jacquez Green. Fearlessness over the middle. He's only 5'9, weighs about a buck 80 or buck 60, actually. He knows when to get down, too. Almost has his head taken off there, but he does pick up the first down. Nice delay route, under control, gives his quarterback a good target, knows what he needs for the first down. Jaquez is thinking, hey, why don't we run that the other way? Let the big guy go inside. Well, now, the big guy didn't catch the last one. That in the red zone, last year they were last. Right now they are first. 11 touchdowns, 14 picks. Oh, this is the 12th. Yes, touchdown king. You're talking about two young quarterbacks who are very prescient in the pocket. And so each team capitalizes on the other's turnover after a bad snap and the Culpepper fumble. The Buccaneers go 74 yards, and each of the quarterbacks has scored tonight. 
You know, I'm not sure that was a quarterback draw either. I think he saw the Red Sea's part and he just took off and used his athletic ability to get in the end zone. So take that, Dante, says Sean King. King's third rushing touchdown of the year. Martin Gramatica ties the game. 74 yard buck drive after the fumble. 4 1 left in a spirited first quarter. 7 7. Sport utilities on Earth. Ford Outfitters. No boundaries. It's the biggest hit on video. Go long, go long! Whoa, ooh, Looks like a new record. Toy Story 2 on video and DVD Tuesday, October 17th. That sandwich was good. Is there another one? We're saving it for Dave. You can't resist Wendy's bacon mushroom melt with all that bacon and cheddar. Hey, Dave, why don't you stay out a few more laps? Okay. Where's that sandwich? Here, I hope no one ate my lunch. When you gotta have one, you gotta have one. Introducing something totally new from Verizon Wireless. It's called New Every Two. We'll give you a new digital phone up to $100 value every two years for free when you sign up. A reminder, next Monday night, we go to Nashville. The Titans are hot, the Jaguars are not, but that's become a great rivalry. And now a critical game for the Jags. Minnesota-Chicago is the ESPN Sunday night game. Minnesota Twins right there, huh? <laughs> I don't remember Killebrew and Allison looking that good. Two minutes and one. Martin Gramatica kicks off to Tyrone Carter. Carter from the two, out past the 20. Brought down at the 22 by number 22. Brian Kelly, number 25 as well. Paul Pepper and the Bikes offense coming back out. Keyshawn putting on a new shirt, maybe Dennis's shirt. 350 left in the quarter. From Mall in the United States. That's the Mall of America, from about 15 minutes south of downtown Minneapolis. And on the site of the old Metropolitan Stadium where the Vikings and Twins had at it. You know, Dan Al and I went out to the Mall of America the other day to the piercing pagoda and had our nipples pierced. <laughs> you, you were out. Yeah, yeah I'm out. Al, I'm leave out your post in for a couple months. I was out too from the 22 yard line. Culpepper. Throwing wide open is Randy Moss. How did he get that open? And he takes it to the Buccaneer 42 yard line. Buccaneers were playing a two deep zone, and uh, the tight end, John Davis, went down the middle. That allowed Moss to get down the sideline. Donnie Abraham turns him loose here. He's expecting help from the safety. Safety coming over too late. Never even do see him. After the play fake, good protection for Culpepper. And he can just step up and let it rip. There's the safety. That's Lynch. He's way out of the play, playing 2D. Moss with three touchdown catches last week. This one good for 35 yards. Culpepper buys time, throws, caught 26 yard line. Randy Moss again. So back to back to Moss. Culpepper couldn't get off to a better start. He'd run one in. Now he's five for five, and now he's finding number 84. Moss goes deep on one play, hooks up on the next play in front of Abraham, and another first down for Minnesota. That offensive line is dominating the Buck defensive line right now. From the 25, you talk about guys you have to account for on every play. And he springs loose twice in a row out of the ground. Back. Nice move 
turns no gain into about a six-yard pickup, tackled by Derek Brooks. Boy, does Smith know how to set a tackler up there? Well, or, a, or an alleged tackler, <laughs> as Donnie Abraham was that time. Donnie Abraham is a nice tackler, too. You know, the thing about it is, is that uh, Al said how smooth he was. Big play here, though. Damian Robinson, they're starting weak safeties, limping off the field. <laughs> And he's replaced by Dexter Jackson. Keyshawn looks on, second and four, Minnesota. Game tied, late first quarter. Smith. And Robert, who came into the game averaging over five yards a carry, the league average perennially about 4.0. So Robert gets to the 16-yard line, a little shy of the first. You know, Keyshawn must stand on the sideline and sidelines and look at the offense that Randy Moss is in and just think, wow, I wish I had that. You have to wonder if Parcells got some ultimate revenge on Keyshawn. Obviously, Tampa Bay's a great organization, but it's not the passing center of the universe. And uh, you must look at Moss and be jealous to some extent. Third down and one, under a minute to play in the quarter. John Lynch comes up to make the tackle. Didn't need much. But, you know, that was such a great tackle because it pulled Robert Smith back away from the first down yardage. Watch Lynch here. He's coming on to a run blitz here, makes contact, and now pulls Smith back and keeps him from getting the first down. Great play by Lynch. And it's fourth down and one, and they eschew the field goal attempt, at least for the moment. They're going to let the clock run down. The quarter will end, and they'll take it to the other side here. But it's fourth and one when play resumes. That is the end of a very good first quarter in Minneapolis. Tampa Bay 7. Minnesota 7 and Monday Night Football returns after this message and a word for ABC stations. Do you remember anything after being scanned? A human was cloned. cloned. That human was you. Well, you cloned the wrong man. They'll do anything to destroy the evidence. And you are the evidence. Daddy? How do you know? He's not you, and you're not him. I know who I am. The Sixth Day. Rated PG-13. Opens everywhere November 17th. The new new economy won't be like the old new economy. The new new economy will have new ideas. Ideas like profitability. With powerful e-business solutions, the new new economy will be about how well you run your e-business, not just how well you promote it. SAP. History says the Titans have the Jaguars' number. Will McNair and Tennessee inflict more pain, or can Jacksonville break the spell? Redemption or humiliation? Monday Night Football, next week at 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific. E-Trade's online sign-up makes it easy to open up. Right. So we start the second quarter here in Minneapolis. Al Michaels with Dan Fouch, Dennis Miller, Eric Dickerson, Melissa Stark. Fourth down, short one from the 16-yard line. Vikings, 139 total yards, but need one here to retain possession, and Culpepper does it himself. Takes it to the 15-yard line, first down on the sneak. Second time they've converted on a fourth down play. It's funny, when we were talking to Derek Brooks the other day, he said, when was the last time he faced a quarterback this big? He said, Kent Graham, here we see the play. Plenty to, plenty. 
plenty of yardage there. All he has to do is fall over. He picks it up if it's fourth and two. But Brooks said he told Graham, you don't quarterback sneak against us. And he whacked him a couple times. And indeed, Graham ceased and desisted. But I don't sense that for Mr. Culpepper. Derek Brooks giving away about 31 pounds at the 14-yard line, first down. Carter in motion, whistle before. It might be delay a game, and it is. Delay a game, offense, five-yard penalty remains first down. That type of penalty really doesn't hurt the Vikings, gives Moss and Carter more room to work. Melissa Stark. Al, you may have noticed on the sidelines, Keyshawn Johnson is now sporting a new look. He just came over to the trainer, had him cut off the sleeves of his shirt. He told the trainer that it was causing the ball to slip too much. Perhaps that explains his fumble and his drop pass. <laughs> okay. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. I believe that one. Any port next door, first and 15. Here is Robert Smith for a gain of three to the 17-yard line. <laughs> The Vikings under Green, remember two years ago, they started out brilliantly, wound up 15 and once at all kinds of records, and then came within a missed Gary Anderson field goal of going to the Super Bowl. Instead, it was Morton Anderson kicking it in overtime for Atlanta to send the Falcons to the Super Bowl. Second and 12 from the 16 out of the shotgun. It's picked up. Culpepper, nowhere to roll. They converge on him. Tripped up. Anthony McFarland got a hand in. Rondé Barber was that corner blitz, Al, number 20. He's got three and a half sacks on the year so far. He timed it perfectly. He knew what Culpepper's cadence was when the ball was going to be snapped. Here he comes. And uh, John Davis just takes him off track long enough, but the rest of that buck relentless pressure by that defensive line coming into the game they had 17 and a half of the 22 total team sacks it's a happy year in the barber household his brother tiki's doing great up in gotham too twin brother identical twins third and 13 from the 18 yard line little roll under pressure taken down from behind by chidi ahanatu Ahana too gets credit for a sack, two and a half for him this season now. Well, the one thing that they, the coaches have told Culpepper is you've got to be patient. You've got to be able to go back, look at the defense, but watch, he zeroes in on one receiver here. The receiver he doesn't have it, now he's going to take off running. But he hesitated too long, and Chidi Ahana too, with great speed, ran him down. Warren Sapp is being triple teamed. Forget double team. 38-yard attempt by Gary Anderson is good. Anderson is now 22 points away from eclipsing George Blanda's mark and becoming the all-time leading scorer in the history of the National Football League. He gives Minnesota a three-point advantage. You want to take a break? Yeah, I'm burning up. So, are you having as good a time as I am? Oh, do you want to go somewhere more quiet? Don't you find me attractive? Coors Light, frost brewed at the edge of freezing. Did you say something? E is for experiment. Emergency. Embarrassment. And expensive. But not if you're working with Dell. Since we design our servers, storage, and services to make it easier for you to succeed on the internet. So, E is for easy. At least with Dell it is. To find out more, visit Dell.com. Delhi business servers use Intel Pentium 3 Xeon processors. Last season ended with this burning question lingering in the air. Hey, what smells? Now, this crack team is sticking its nose where it doesn't belong. That brought a tear to my eye. Will they get to the bottom of this mystery? Don't be sniffing there. Find out in the Whose Line Is It Anyway Who Done It season premiere, Thursday at 8, 7 central on ABC. Friday, why not tune in a half hour before 2020 to catch a new show the critics call irresistible, charming, extremely likable, charming, top-notch, a winner, and undeniably charming. That's really nice of you to say. Wait, there's more. Like a delightful show that produces belly laughs. So right before 2020, catch Madigan Men. Come on, come on.
Friday on ABC. Here's a reminder, Sunday, an all-new practice to appeal an unjust verdict. Two lawyers from opposing sides do what they've never done before. They fight together. You'll see it on The Practice, ABC Sunday, 10 Eastern and Pacific. Rush Limbaugh on the right, next to the owner of the Minnesota Vikings, Red McCombs. Red McCombs bought the team prior to the 1998 season. Tom Clancy, the author, tried to buy it. But the financing fell through and McCombs stepped in. Kickoff taken at the one-yard line by Aaron Stecker. And he brings it back to the 28, loses the ball. A flag comes in. The ball is loose, a penalty. And this is usually a penalty against the returning team. So if the Buccaneers don't have the ball at the bottom of this pile, the Vikings are in business again. Wow, Limbaugh looked great, didn't he? One, one of the guys in on this play was Mitch oh. Berger. Well, Red McCombs is going to look pretty good, too, as you can see, because they have recovered the fumble. Well, you know, but now let's see about the penalty. We still haven't had the penalty call yet. There were a couple of uh, flags thrown. Here's Berger. Watch him take off. He gets right in on the tackle, got his helmet on the ball, and it came loose. Mo Williams recovers. The penalty is against Holy Tampa. Receiving team number 33. The penalty is declined. First down. Eric Vance. Joe Marciano, the Tampa Bay special teams coach. Take a look at the penalty here on Vance holding right there on Tyrone Carter. But look at Berger, 6'4", gets blasted backwards. He weighs about 230. Could take that shot. He got the ball loose. Well, Berger signed a new $6 million deal. I think they wrote it in that he gets a certain amount per tackle. <laughs> Checking his hand out as he coughs it up now at the 28-yard line after the second Tampa Bay turnover. Robert Smith takes it to the 25-yard line. That was the case that you were talking, Dennis, earlier about Klein Saucer meeting Lynch. Well, we just had it right there. Classic confrontation between a big fullback and a very aggressive and strong, strong safety in John Lynch. Good play by Lynch. Held uh, Smith just two yards. There's big Jim Klein Saucer, 280-pound fullback. My goodness. <laughs> I had him at 272, and I thought it was silly at that figure. 280. It's getting out of hand. Second and eight from the 26. <laughs> Tip and incomplete. Knocked down at the five-yard line by the linebacker, Nate Webster, who goes back in coverage. Jamie Duncan has been hurt. Hasn't been played, uh, hasn't played much tonight. Was limited in practice. And this is a rookie out of Miami, Webster. Yeah, Monty Kiffin told me, he gave him this bit of advice in his first start in the NFL. Says, don't try to make all pro on Monday Night Football. You're not going to make it to the Pro Bowl based on tonight's game. Keep making plays like that, though, he might. He said, just read your keys and make a couple of tackles. Don't be guessing on the ball. So great range getting back and making that tip. There's Webster as Culpepper misfires for the first time tonight. Dante five for six. Bucks show blitz and then come up to the line of scrimmage and ask for and receive a timeout. Charge timeout. Tampa Bay. To the consternation of Dungey. 11-16 left in the half. Tony didn't like that. He wins. Excellent. Lee Dungarees. Play the game at BuddyLee.com. Touchdown! Timmy Brown, the Oakland Raiders have won the game. Monday Night Football is being brought to you by Chrysler. 
We're reinventing the passion for driving. Cold, refreshing Zima. Zima, a few degrees cooler. Charles Schwab, when we created a smarter kind of investment firm, we also created a smarter kind of investor. And Lee Dungarees, Buddy Lee tested, Buddy Lee approved. After the timeout, when the Bucks called it because they probably had 12 men on the field, that was the reason for that call. Third down and nine now at the 25-yard line. As Culpepper fires over the middle, wide open, touchdown, John Davis. season for John Davis the former buck comes back to burn Tampa Anderson draws that much closer to Blanda and with 11 11 to go in the half Minnesota now leads by 10 catch the ball much in Tampa Bay seven catches in three years 11 this year but he's the guy, remember last year, Sean King hit Davis to beat the Redskins to send Tampa Bay to the NFC Championship game. And he was granted free agency, comes over to Minnesota. And with his speed, he's opening up the entire field, not only for himself, but for Boston Carter. Burgers kick, Aaron Stecker from the goal line. Hit hard as he brings it back to the 25-yard line with 11 minutes to play in the half. Back to the TD. Take a look at a couple of linebackers here. Culpepper steps up here. He's going to pump fake. Then he's going to hit Davis down here. But because of his running ability, both linebackers came up, gave him a clear throw to Davis for the touchdown. Watch Derek Brooks, one of the best in the business. But he was burned earlier, as were the rest of the Bucks, by Culpepper's touchdown on the first play of the game. He has to respect his running ability. So Tampa Bay in a 10-point hole. The crowd in full throat. Four minutes into the second quarter. King to Dunn. And that's a five-yard loss. Tackled by Dwayne Rudd as we go to Eric Dickerson. Well, Al, I asked Danny Green what made him go with Cole Pepper so early. He said, Eric, I worked with him on the scout team all last year. He made great decisions throwing the football. He said, also, he's a great athlete. And you see tonight, I see why he went with Dante Cole Pepper. It was shocking when they picked him. Remember, they had Randall Cunningham, as you see Dante's numbers tonight. They had Cunningham. They let him go. He's in Dallas now. They elected not to re-sign Jeff George, even though they may have an offer that they knew he'd refuse. He winds up in Washington and wind up with Dante. Here's King throwing, and that's incomplete. All start covered on the play. The other thing we should point out, Dan, is that the one guy that the Vikings did want was Dan Marino. Remember when Marino was told by Miami he wouldn't come back? And I talked to Marino today, and Dan said it was very enticing. He said, I thought about it long and hard, but I realized I thought I could get through the year with my arm, but not my legs. And especially on this plastic uh, surface here at the Metrodome, they play a lot of games in this division on uh, AstroTurf. And the one thing about Marino told me a long time ago is that uh, he still felt he could throw the ball with the best. It's just that he had so many leg problems towards the end of his year. The tempting part, I think, were these receivers. Sure. Well, Denny Green recruited him hard, but Dan had to turn him down, and now King converts. It's Jacques Green who's become their go-to guy for a big first down on third and long up to the 40-yard line. The Vikings have got to respect the speed of Jacques Green. He runs a 4-4, and look, he gives the impression that he's going deep here, cuts to the inside, don't see any Vikings around. Chris Dishman and Orlando Thomas in a real loose zone that time, and that's a huge conversion for Sean King and Jacquez Green. All right, they got some breathing space. They're out near midfield now. They haven't been running all start at all. Vikings give up five to a carry. They should start pounding them. Dunn has carried four times for nine yards. Allstott not at all until now. They hear you, Dennis. Man, do you know your 
football. You know, that's the one question I get. Does he really know his football? And I, as I try to tell people, yeah, I think he does. Dennis, you know football. Danny, move. You're sitting on my Ouija board. <laughs> Well, you're right. I mean, his first carry of the game, what did he get? Nine yards on that play? It just makes sense. I'd run this guy the next six, six or seven plays. You see Patrick Hape there, number 82, leading him in the hole. He's a big guy, too, at 260 pounds. That's what the Bucks have to do, right, Dennis? Uh, exacto mundo. Second down, and oh, a well conceived play, but not well executed. Dishman covering intended for Jacquez Green. That's probably been the biggest rap against Sean King as he tends to miss some of the easy throws. When you had a receiver open such as he did that time, he just rushed his throw, led Green too far to the inside where no receiver wants to be led. All right, now say Tampa Bay runs the ball more than anybody else in the league. Say it because they do. Keyshawn is going to simply find it untenable if Jack Kez Green becomes the go-to guy, which it appears he is tonight. It's a very high-priced decoy. He split to the right, third and in inches. He signals something to Sean King, but they run it anyway to Allstott, who takes it across the 50, and that's a Tampa first down. Pretty good indication of the patience of Tony Dungy and his offensive coordinator, Les Steckel. And listening to our super analyst, Dennis Miller, giving the ball to Mike Allstott and see what he can do. Listen, Tony Dungy, a former Steeler, I'm from Pittsburgh. I said, Tony, you got to throw me a credibility bone here, baby. Well, there's part of the credibility bone right there because you can see Allstott and Dunn have been sharing it through the years, the four years they played together, each in double figures in carries per game. That is very unusual. At least in modern times. On first down, that is caught at the 41-yard line. The pass hauled in by Jacquez Green. Well, we're inside the dome, but outside, it's a beautiful autumn evening in Minneapolis. Our aerial facilities provided by Goodyear Tires. Sort of tonight where Mary Richards flings her beret in That's, the air. I always huh? wondered where Mary's apartment was. I was going to call Grant Tinker. He'd be the only guy who'd remember. We Look, have a penalty. Twelve men in the huddle for Tampa. Twelve players in the offensive huddle. Five-yard penalty means second down. And that was Jacquez Green. So the uh, Buccaneers had 12 men on the field on defense where it cost them a timeout. And now this mistake by Jacquez Green not getting out of the huddle will cost them five yards. So instead of second down and two, it goes to a tough second down and seven, especially for this offense. Les Steckel, remember in uh, 1984, he was the head coach of the Minnesota Vikings. He was 3-13. And got bounced, wound up last year as the offensive coordinator for the AFC champion Titans, and then over here. On second and seven, they run a draw with Dunn, and he has some room to roam, and gets taken down to the 42, hit down by Robert Griffin. You know, the cumulative effect of all these crowd shots in the Metrodome is you understand how Ventura got elected. These people definitely walk to the feet of their own drummer up here. The governor, who occasionally shows up at these uh, confrontations. Wow. Who's it going to be, Bush or Gore? <laughs> <laughs> Janie or Lieberman? Third down and four from the 43. Blitz, a little flip. Dunn has the first down. Warwick Dunn. Caught that little flip. The blitz was on. Almost caught it behind the line of scrimmage. And yep. then picks up the first. Looked like it was real close to being a lateral, but he caught the ball. The blitz is on. You can see the fine toss here. And now the block on the outside by Dave Moore. That gives uh, Dunn the first down. But Keyshawn Johnson's going to get a nice block here. Or is he? Yes, he is. Right there on Ed McDaniel on the inside. Well-designed play. Screamed him out. Now King hands the ball off to Dunn again. Warwick to the 35, stopped by the rookie out of Boston College, Chris Hovan and John Randall. Dennis, I would rather, if the Bucks are going to run inside, they give it to your guy, Alstott. This is a little draw play from the ump cam here. A little cut back to the inside, but you can see Chris Hovan with the tackle in his first 
start. Taking over for John Randall, they moved Randall to the outside. You were chatting up Hovan before the game. You told him he's a different breed of cat, huh? Well, he, he's a non-stop motor guy, and the Vikings love his attitude. Good tattoos, too. Second and nine, flag is thrown. Yeah! And thrown by the umpire that normally means holding, and then King finding everybody covered. Dancers out of bounds at the 32-yard line. You know, perchance Dan Marino is at home tonight watching this game, and he looks at this array of talent. Maybe this was a place to. They got a heck of a fullback. Or, or, you got Warwick. You got two four-four wideouts. A big Keyshawn who'll go across the middle. There's a lot of tools here. From the ump cam. Look at Jeff Christie right here. That's an easy call as he tackles uh, John Burrow coming on the blitz, and then Christie stands <laughs> up and says, "Oh me? Wow. They may they may decline oh. this." Offense, number 62, 10-yard penalty, repeat, second down. They thought about it, but opt to take the penalty. Well, it's smart to take the penalty. It pushes uh, any potential field goal try by Martin Gramatica back that much farther. Although he has a strong leg, and he will be kicking indoors. You know, Barino's watching this game tonight, and he probably is because he flew home. He was the Grand Marshal of the Columbus Day Parade in New York today. Yeah, Dennis was busy. Second and 19 from the 45. King, safety valve is done. And Warwick to the 35-yard line. Not a big guy, of course, is Warwick done, but he doesn't seek the sideline. He drove for the extra yard or two, not going out of bounds. Yeah, he lowered his head, but it was so impressive. It's, once he caught the ball, there was no hesitation. He knew that uh, he had a long way to go to pick up the first down, got as much as he could, and put the uh, Buccaneers in a very manageable third down situation now. Well, this guy's got such quicks to think that he could have 10 carries for three yards last week. It'll show you they quite haven't hammered out their blocking scheme there yet. From the gun, third down and eight. Goes through his progressions, and that's close to a first down as Dave Moore is right there by the yellow stripe. Love the progressions. Just love them. <laughs> Ed McDaniel makes the tackle. Moore doesn't get many catches. You see, that's uh, his eighth on the year. I'm impressed with the job that the uh, Buccaneers offensive line has done protecting Sean King so far. First down. Right over the middle and right over the top of our umpire, Ron Botchin. I think that's how you pronounce it. Yes, it is. That? Long time. Good, uh, good official. Very good official. Now you've got Tampa Bay taking a timeout with 328 to the half. Mini by 10. Chrysler Town & Country, re-engineered and redesigned with over 80 available safety and security features. Chrysler Town & Country, the best minivan ever. <laughs> Plenty of donor here as we go to Melissa. Well, Al, you don't want to let the Buccaneers in the red zone because when they get there, they score. So far this season, a perfect 15 of 15. It's 12 touchdowns, three field goals. And right now they're a little outside the red zone because on first down, done on a screen, and he gets rolled down by Lance Sawyer, flag throw. Let's check in with Eric. 
Well, Al, Melissa said that Keyshawn had cut his sleeves off his shirt. Believe me, when you start having fumbles, it gets in your head. And right now, the fumbles in Keyshawn's head from last week and also from starting this game tonight, from having a big fumble, it's in his head right now. And the amazing thing, as we pointed out, Eric, at the top, is that he did not fumble at all as a Jet and did not fumble in his first four games as a Buck. But now, back-to-back -back weeks, he's fumbled. And, you know, you really don't need long sleeves inside. It's kind of warm. A lot of body heat in this building right now. Second and ten. King fires. Caught at the 21. Jacquez Green came in averaging 26 yards of reception. Dwayne Rudd makes the hit at the 21. Five catches now for Jacquez Green as uh, Keyshawn the threat. We saw him make a big play on their touchdown drive. And this is where he was very important in the red zone. I think Keyshawn wants less speckle and more passes as well. Third down six. This drive nine minutes old. King will run for the first down and get it to the 11-yard line as we go to the two-minute warning. So Sean King takes off. This King kid is a cool customer. When we met with him the other day, he's just mature beyond his ears. Beyond his ears, too. And his ears. <laughs> so the Bucks. You didn't see his ears, did you? I'm pretty observant. At the 10 yard line at the two minute warning with 157 to the half. The skilled players watch the intensity of John Randall and Jerry Wunsch and Frank Middleton. That's what it's all about protecting the quarterback. Man. It's first and 10. They can get a first down without a touchdown. Ball just outside the 10 yard line. Green steps out of bounds at the six yard line with a buck 53 remaining in the half. Tampa Bay with one timeout remaining. Well, our new feature mic'd up at the half. And tonight we've had the mic on Chris Carter, the future Hall of Famer. How you get this guy tonight? Catching the ball. I'm running. Blocking. Thank you. You know we do that to people here. You know what I'm saying? There's an anointing here to be able to catch the ball. He's doing a good job. A little preview before the game as he makes the acquaintance of his good buddy Tony Dungy, who we used to coach here. Now on second and six, it's all stock. Banging his way down to the two-yard line, so it'll be third down and about a yard and three quarters for the first and two for the touch. You know one thing, the number 64 is fired up. Randall McDaniel and Jeff Christie that time gave uh, Alstott the cutback lane and he took it down inside the five yard line. Watch him, watch Alstott run right by John Randall here as Jerry Wunsch pulls Randall to the inside. Now third and one and they don't get it. It's Alstott stopped at the four yard line. So a little less than two for the first down called by the Vikings because they know that the Bucks now have to kick a field goal and they want to have plenty of time for them to work their way down the field with a minute nine to the half. Field goal attempt upcoming. Just when you thought there was nothing new to say about love, go to the bus station and hang out with no underpants. Meet the one man what happened? who thinks he knows it all. Hey, sweet thing. Can I buy you a fish sandwich? I hope you burn in hell. Yes, yeah, duly noted. The ladies, man. Telegram, dear Leon, stop. The 70s are over. Stop. Let me see that. Wind Art starts October 13th. What do I want the internet to be? I want it to be like Frank here. He really knows customers. Package Frank, put them together with the internet. Now you've got something. You know, I just want doing e-business with us to be more human. Today, Nortel Networks is combining the power of the new high-performance internet with the tools your business needs to deliver stronger, more frank-like e-business solutions. Come together right now over me. Remaining and two timeouts for the Vikings. Well, Chris Carter, remember, started his career in Philadelphia and then got his life together and of course since he's come here he has been one of the elite receivers in the National Football League. The thing about him is he's never had to rely on his speed but he has always been able to rely on his hands. 
More great catches made by number 80 than just about anybody that's ever played this game. Spectacular receiver who never had the great speed. I think Carter and Sapp are both great examples of how certain people mature at different times in their life. From the 31-yard line, dropping the snap, and then it's all Culpepper can do to retain possession as he falls on into the 20-yard line, and that'll be a gift sack for Steve White. And again, we had Matt Burke, the center, a bad snap earlier on a shotgun. What about this one? It's perfect snap. Culpepper was looking to his left. Ball hit him right in the face. Rookie mistake or a second year guy Tampa making Bay. a mistake with this concentration. The final charge team timeout. Now Tampa Bay takes a timeout. That's a very curious call. In fact, John Lynch, I think, is going over to the official to say, wait a minute. We didn't call for a timeout. I mean, that's it's a very unusual place to call a timeout here. It's their last. Well, and originally, Dante Culpepper got up after the fumble recovery and was looking to the Viking bench to see if he should call a timeout. Right. After the loss, he said, uh, Denny Green said no. You know what I think is happening here? I think for some reason, Dungy wants the play to be reviewed. But remember, in the final two minutes, the coach can't challenge. Upstairs is the only place where the play can be stopped. I need the replay rule to get a little more convoluted. Well, they didn't want to call a timeout. I mean, that was whoever called timeout either really screwed up or something happened of what we're not aware, but I mean, they just gave Minnesota a gift timeout, is what they did. Yeah, well, the replay rule makes the infield fly rule read like Hemingway. Total yardage pretty close to being even at second down and 21 now, and this is Culpepper. with the interception. So now they're happy they called a timeout. Yeah. Well, he called Pepper, pump faked, and then he got his arm hit as he was delivering that ball. He was trying to work the safety into the middle of the field. Watch Culpepper come back here. He's going to pump fake after the fake to Robert Smith. And now the pressure from the back side. Watch the ball kind of come out end over end. That sets up the easy interception by Robinson and gives the Buccaneers a chance to add to their 10 points. Pressure from behind caused that ball to come out and that pressure was by Warren Sapp. Here's Moss on the outside. Great job by Abraham steering him back to the inside where he's going to get help from the safety. Donnie Abraham helped that interception. Very smart of Randy there. He smelled floater. <laughs> Started taking care of himself at the end of that. He would have been decapitated. So Tampa Bay now without a timeout at the 48, down by 10. Three-man Viking rush, caught over the middle. Johnson, 42-yard line, tackled by Rudd. Okay, Hurry up offense here, second down and six. Kicks taken way too long. Way too long. Side. They have to stop the clock, and they do. It's Riddell Anthony at the 34-yard line. So now you're looking at a 51 or 52-yard field goal if you know, they don't get another yard. And now that's a case where the quarterback should have had two plays called in the huddle. They did not, so they came up to the line of scrimmage, and King had to call a play and wasted a good five seconds. Heads up by Anthony getting out of bounds after picking up the first down. Well, the thing about Sean King that everybody praises is his easy-going, laconic manner. And I guess in a hurry-up offense, you have to get frenetic. From the 34-yard line on first down, trying to get closer for Gramatica, throwing deep down the sideline, and that's incomplete, intended for Riddell Anthony. That's not necessarily Sean King's fault, though. That's coaching there. The coach has got to have his quarterback prepared to use the time as wisely as he can. Again, King with time to throw just throws an errant pass here. But if Anthony makes that catch, Robert Griffith may kill him. Now, Tampa Bay is a little bit between a rock and a hard place here. If you work the middle to get it closer, you might not have time to stop the clock again. Second down and 10 from the 34. So they have to work the outside, and that's incomplete as Johnson can't haul it in, and now you have to work the outside or kick the field goal right here, and they bring in Gramatica. See now, what I mean about Gramatica? Little Andy Garcia guy. <laughs> well, I don't know if Andy Garcia can hit one from 53. I know that Martin Gramatica can, because that's his career longest. 
Do you think Andy Garcia can hit from here? Andy? Oh, Andy's a jack of all trades. <laughs> Some hit a nine iron 53 run. Yeah, he's a hell of a heck of a golfer. 53 yard attempt for Martin Gramatica, and it's a screwball that goes wide right. It started down the middle, and it looked like Boyd Wilhelm came into the game. With a knuckleball. He had a knuckleball going. He had a screwball going. Well, the winds are swirling here tonight at the stick. Al blew Stu Miller right off the mound. <laughs> Mark Royal, the punter, is also the holder. It's perfect. But when you got to hit it this far, you got to really drive it. <laughs> and <laughs> that, that, Andy Garcia doesn't act that well. Folks, if you want to know the face I'd make if I was about to be hit, Gramatica just made it. <laughs> Ooh! Have a look. What a weird looking kick this was. Look at this. Fluttering and acting like a screwball. And Culpepper will down it as the half comes to an end. Vikings on top by a score of 17 to 10. Lexus halftime show. We have Carter, Mike Brissam. Take a look at Keyshawn Johnson. First half highlights coming up after a good first half at the Metrodome. Let's go to Eric Dickerson. Coach, you look like you're having some problems on the third down conversions. Well, I think the big thing, I mean, we played so well on third down last week. I think to let them keep the ball for 19 plays, 10 minute drive was very bad for us and very good for them. And uh, we just got to do a lot better, play much more aggressive defensively in the second half. All right, over to you, Melissa. Thanks, Coach. Now, it's not the All right, Eric, Tony, you guys made a number of mistakes in the first half, but you only trailed by a touchdown. What do you need to do in the second half? Well, we just need to play better. Uh, we just have kind of self-destructed, and hopefully we can uh, eliminate the mistakes and make a game of it the second half. Thanks, Coach. All right, Melissa, so halftime, 17-10, Minnesota leading as they try to stay unbeaten. Lexus halftime show coming up after this message from the NFL and a word from our ABC stations. Access NFL.com. Monday is film day. Access NFL Films highlights. Tuesday is a day off. I love the shop. Access NFL shop. Wednesdays, we get the scouting reports. Access player profiles and stats. Thursdays, we're talking about the upcoming game. Access player chats. Friday, final roster, final preparation. Access fantasy football. Weekend hits, showtime. <laughs> This is Derek Brooks of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. He supports the United Way. He has a way with kids. Okay, okay, who wants to sing my favorite song? Good. Who's my favorite player? Mr. Derek Brooks. 153 tackles. 36 assists. Two times all pro. How many? Three times all pro. Better, let's start again. Who's our favorite player? Derek. Good, good. Derek. Thursday, a thing of pure beauty, a cruel. Showed what he's made of on this play, the athletic ability to stay with the catch. That set up the touchdown by Sean King. And as far as his advice to Sean King, he told me that uh, you got to know where your money is, Sean. Don't let outside influences affect the way you play the game. I'm your money. When you need it, come to me. And in the second half, Keyshawn Johnson's going to have to come up with better plays than that if the Bucks are going to win this game. Three catches for 46 yards for Keyshawn Johnson and the Minnesota Vikings 4-0 coming in at halftime leading Tampa Bay 17-10 second half of Monday Night Football when we come back. Thrown 21 passes in the first half for 14 completions. Therefore the uh, Buccaneers have the time of possession but the stat we don't see is the turnovers both teams have two. That's why we've got a tight game. And Martin Gramatica will kick off. The Vikings will get the ball as we start the third quarter. Back deep to receive, Mo Williams. Bouncing ball. Fielded at the eight. Tyrell Carter goes over to take it there. And he gets wrapped up at the 28-yard line. That's where the Vikings will begin their first drive. Talked about those turnovers. Each team with two. Keyshawn Johnson, first play of the game. First reception of the game on that fumble, then a bad snap by Matt Burke. Goldpumper can't get it. Big hit by the kicker there, Matt Mitch Berger. Causes Stecker to cough that one up. And then pressure from Warren Sapp and Damian Robinson picks on off Culpepper. But that's the type of game you expect when you got two great rivals such as we have tonight. 
Well, these guys are the best division rivals. They've split the last seven years, the two games in regular season. From the 28-yard line, Culpepper begins the second half by looking to throw. Dumps it off underneath. Robert Smith gets a block. It's out past the 40 to the 41-yard line. Gain of 13. What about the Moss Johnson? comparison in the first half tonight as we look at the two premier receivers well, as you can expect the 26 yards by Moss that's uh, what he's all about but the other receiver is Jacquez Green six catches for 67 yards for Sean King and the Bucks. and somewhere on Long Island LeGrand he turtles in his bark <laughs> With those two catchers, they came on successive plays. Meanwhile, let's go back to the prior play. Randy Moss, who earlier threw a big block to spring Culpepper on his touchdown. That's Warren Sapp greeting uh, Dante Culpepper. He told us yesterday, doesn't care how big he is. The bigger they are, the harder they fall. Trying to get in his head now. Warren probably got up and said, I'll be back. Smith on second and two. by Smith setting up the block of Fine Saucer and of his center Matt Burke getting out in front. Big hit there by Robinson but uh, good job by Robert Smith with the patience to set up not one block but two blocks. Well Smitty has a career average of 4-8 a carry and only one player active has bigger one than that that's Napoleon Coffin of 4-9. Smith gets a breather he comes out Mo Williams in and the shotgun now flanking on Hatchet as Hatchet was going for the bomb. Robinson's a weak safety, not used to playing out on the corner, but when you've got receivers like Carter and Moss on the other side, somebody's got to go out and cover Matthew Hatchet. That's a mismatch Tony Dungy does not want to see. Well, we've seen Culpepper run tonight. That's we've seen him. Defense, number 24. Automatic. First down. We've seen he has a rifle on out patterns. If he starts dropping these passes into the bucket, they have to rewrite the rule book. Here they are over here, Robinson, 24, and Hatchet with a little hitch and go. There's the push right there. Easy call. From the 24, out of the gun, inside handoff. Lynch is right there to wrap up Mo Williams. The ever-present Lynch, who was a great baseball player in high school and college as well. In fact, he was one of the early draft choices of the Florida Marlins and clearly could have made the majors. And he clearly knows how important this uh, a win tonight would be over the Vikings. Watch the bad snap again by Burke and a great catch by Culpepper. And there, the big hit by Lynch. But he knows they got a rematch with the Vikings coming in three weeks. Down in Tampa, another look at that fine catch by Culpepper and the big hit by Lynch. Minnesota has to take a timeout. <laughs> wasabi. Yeah, wasabi. 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 Compaq, welcome to the new IT inspiration technology from Compaq. Chrysler, we're reinventing the passion for driving in Southwest Airlines. Proud sponsor of the NFL and official airline of the Super Bowl. Little Bobby Dylan bumper music yeah. there. Yeah. He's from Minnesota. Changed his name from Gary Zimmerman to Bob Dylan. <laughs> when he was at the Broncos. Second and 11. Cole Pepper throws and that is 
reach back for it. And could make the play. Sherm Lewis, one of the assistant coaches, the offensive coordinators who works the sideline. A lot of them like to work upstairs, some like to patrol the sideline. I saw a Lig edict today on Paul Tagliabue's letterhead that said by the year 2003, every NFL team has to have an assistant coach named Sherm. It seems that way, doesn't it? Well, they just, you know, they like to tighten or, it up. They or, like uniformity. Or a head coach. Sherman coming over from Green Bay, where Mike Sherman is now the new head coach. A lot of Shermans flying around, Mr. Peabody. Right. Ray Sherman was here last year as the offensive coordinator. Under pressure, a little dump off to Robert Smith, and then he gets dragged down. Nice play by Anthony McFarland, the guy who's starting, and that uh, precipitated the waving of one Brad Culpepper in a surprising move. In training camp. Yeah, as Minnesota's Cole Pepper comes to the floor, Tampa Bay's is let go because Mr. McFarland is the kind of talent. There we see. Derek Culpepper Brooks just drills Cole Pepper. Looked like a real good play call at first because it was a blitz and they had a screen pass call, but the team speed of the Buccaneers is just outstanding. That's why Smith didn't get anything out of that play. McFarland was always being groomed to start, but he has the sort of talent that makes the eventual right now. he and Warren Moon are active who were born in the 50s. Mitch Berger with a great job of getting that ball on its point so Gary Anderson can make that field goal. Two big plays by Mitch Berger tonight. The 31. Speaking of St. Paul, by the way, the Minnesota Wild hockey team will open up its home schedule on Wednesday night against Philadelphia. Many back in the NHL. Warren Sapp had a shot at this one. He blocked one last week against Washington. How many times to see an all pro on the field goal block team? He gives it his all, even when he's resting. Look at that belly going up and down. Wow. <laughs> he sees you when you're sleeping. He knows when you're awake. <laughs> Definitely knows when you've been bad from the 31 yard line. King. And open is green, and then Tate smacks him, and Tampa Bay is looking for a flag. And there it is. He was clearly on his way out of bounds, and that will oftentimes bring out the flag as it does here. Yeah, Denny Green can't be happy with this penalty of frustration by Robert Tate simple down and out good sharp route good throw by Sean King now he's clearly out of bounds good two steps personal foul and a free 15 yards focus. defense number 24 late hit out of bounds 15 yard penalty first down you know he wasn't out of bounds by very much but he was clearly going out of bounds not turning up the field. And I think that's why the call was made. When the official looks at it, he knows the guy's going out of bounds. Alpino. So what do you think of this gig, by can the I, way? Can I query you on something? Of course well, you we can. Have a second. Oh, after this play, we all got right. a big play here. Why is Keyshawn allowed to wear 19? You've been, you've been querying me all year, but you can ask me. A, <laughs> well, I'll tell you in a second. From the 41-yard line, King. And that is caught by Green at the 22-yard line. Remember Les Steckel talked about the advantage he felt with Jack West Green and his speed working against Robert Tate, who is a former wide receiver. This is Tate's fifth start as a corner in the National Football League. He's got great speed and everything, but he's working against a guy that has equal speed in Jack West Green, another one of those Florida Gators. Great receiver, having a great game. You know, Dennis, you... you, you Ask me a question I can't answer. No. I just thought there was a league edict about wideouts wearing numbers on. There is. From the 23-yard line, King throws, and that is hauled in at the 13-yard line by Keyshawn Johnson. No, that is uh, Jack West Green. How about eight catches now for 98 yards for Green? He's going to get worn out. He's going to say, where's Keyshawn? Why is Keyshawn? 
get any of these passes. I don't know. You know there, there is a league edict. The, the wide outs are supposed to wear eight. I mean, in training camp, you can wear just about anything. And then they sift through the guys who are going to get cut. I'm sure we'll have the answer in a fact Maybe tomorrow. they list him as an emergency backup quarterback <laughs> so they can get through. <laughs> Second and one. And it is incomplete. Intended for your man. You know, we've just seen Sean King throwing uh, very catchable passes to five foot nine. Jack has green, and now he overthrows Keyshawn Johnson, who's 6'4". A little bit of a half roll so he can get good vision and just lets the ball go a little bit too high for Johnson. Well, we're saying it, uh, well, we'll talk after this play. Second and 10 from the 13-yard line, and a flag before the snap. They gave it to the up-back all-star. I'm saying it a bit in jest, but I'm telling you, I think Keyshawn will suffer them running the ball all the time. If Green's going to get eight catches to his three every game, you're going to have problems here eventually. Snap, false start. Offense, number 64. Five-yard penalty remains second down. That's Randall McDaniel again. That's how he started his evening off, jumping off sides. Number 64 working on Chris Hovan. Look at Hovan with the stalemate right there. Al, there's that real wide handoff you talked to Sean King about. It really sticks it way out there, doesn't it? He does. Eric Dickerson thinks it helps to lengthen the offense, widen the lane for the running backs. This time they give it to Dunn going straight up the middle, and he goes nowhere. <laughs> Tackled by Hovan. Eric, what about that? reaching out to hand the ball off. Well, Al, the wide handoff is so that the, that the offense can get a chance to stretch. So the running back can stretch, and it stretches the defense. So what it does is it gives the running back a lot of different options to go inside or outside. And my, me, myself, I used to love those wide handoffs. And you see Tampa Bay does a lot of it tonight. It's really pronounced when it's Sean King. I mean, Peyton Manning does it a little bit, but not to this extent. What Sean does is he uses both hands, so it helps sell the play fake. Across the middle, but he can only get to the 14 or just about back to the original line of scrimmage. So it's fourth down, tackled by Griffith, and in comes Grammatica to try to make it a seven point game. Melissa. Al, Martin Grammatica's father has kept every pair of shoes his son has ever worn in a game. He now has 123 pairs. The reason it's superstition. If Martin ever had a bad game, he could revert back to the last pair he wore. According to his, according to his dad, He's never had a bad game. That's why they keep piling up. We'll see here. He has a 33-yard attempt, and this one is good. Every pair? There's a closet you don't want to stumble into. <laughs> the Melvis closet. 8-11 left in the third. Dramatic attacks on three, and the Viking lead is 20 to 13. The Metrodome in Minneapolis, home of the Vikings since 1982 when they came in from the cold. Not that tonight would have been a problem. It's a gorgeous day in Minneapolis. Wow. Well, some marriages work. <laughs> Dramatic is kick at the two-yard line. Tyrone Carter. Back up to the 24-yard line where he's popped first by Eric Vance. People just don't realize how violent kickoff returns are. Eric Vance knows that he's still down. Meanwhile, Dante Culpepper, as you can see in game one, didn't throw a touchdown pass but had a pickoff. But in his last game, three TDs, no interceptions. So nice progression for Whoops. the youngster out of Central Florida. Yeah. Take a look at the uh, final pass play of that drive with Jack Hudson Green. Keyshawn going to the post, tried to get uh, draw the coverage away from Green, but they came up a little bit short. Sean King talking to head coach Tony Dungy about uh, maybe misreading that coverage, and maybe he did have Keyshawn deep to the post. We'll get it next time, guys.
Going over things with the quarterback coach, Clyde Christensen, as the Vikings have it now at the 26-yard line. They begin this drive, first and 10, up by seven. Paul Pepper. Back to the line of scrimmage. You know, Dennis, you talked about Culpepper before and how he would be a, a, a pretty good hog as it turned out when you go back to the Washington Redskins and their Super Bowl team when John Riggins had the big day and how he is about as big as most of the guys in the interior line for Washington. There it is. There are the weights. Yeah, but uh, you didn't see Russ Grimm going 73.6 completion average for no. his senior year in college as a quarterback. That's amazing. In 17 years, the average weight of the offensive line, the team that won the Super Bowl, the same weight of the quarterback for Minnesota who goes down under the weight of Marcus Jones at 278. Well, Dante Culpepper, another of the quarterbacks that Dennis Green has guided to a winning mark, and Dennis talked about the system. We've had the same system in place for nine years. Uh, I think, number two, we've had a lot of guys that have been in the system for a long period of time, and therefore they already know how to do their job. So many times a quarterback is really the only guy that's new that has to learn how to do his job. And then, and I think the other thing is that we think we have a system that is kind of geared uh, towards being able to find out that receivers. It's a vertical offense. Most guys like to throw the ball deep. And uh, I think we try to bounce in with the running attack. So it's a consistent offensive system. This time, though, Culpepper is stopped at the 24-yard line. They can't get on track, and it's three and out. That's a great defensive stand for Tampa Bay. Three straight pass plays called by the Vikings, and three times Culpepper can't cut it loose because the coverage in the secondary is so good. Oh, I think this is Tampa Bay's mindset. They're just going to keep coming at you. They're going to do it over the course of a game, and they're going to do it over the course of a season. I think they get stronger as the boxing match goes on. And this is what happens. They eventually wear you down. This is Berger's first punt of the night. Andre Hastings, the ex-Saint and Steeler, backs up to the 23-yard line. Gets a couple of nice blocks and then brings it back up to the 39-yard line. As we look at Warren Sapp and that Buck defense, they get the ball back for Tampa Bay, down by seven. Showgirl. They're for you, silly. An all new Two Guys and a Girl on ABC's brand new Friday. Minneapolis on this Monday night, and next week we go to Nashville. The Jaguars and Titans have at it. That's Monday night football. Minnesota is on Sunday night, ESPN. They go to Chicago. I got to apologize to Bud Adams last next week. I said he was wearing a rug, and that's his real hair. Sorry, Bud. He just did at the 39 yard line. First down, this is Green, and that's 11 catches tonight. He came into the game having caught 12 balls all year, albeit for a 26-yard per catch average, and tonight 11 for 131. And he really doesn't care which corner he's going to go after. We've seen him beat Robert Tate, number 28. He's gone after the veteran, Chris Dishman, number 25. But we've still yet to see him be able to get loose deep. Remember, that speed is why he's catching a lot of these shorter passes. He's caught 11. Everybody else combined has caught eight. Dump off underneath, and that is Patrick Haight. Tight end H-back type who takes it to the 41-yard line. Tackled by McDaniel. And McDaniel's hurt. Patrick Haight at 262 pounds laid into Ed McDaniel. It was a heck of a collision, and McDaniel came out with his left arm hanging down by his side. King finds his outlet receiver. And for Hape, it's just his fourth catch of the year. There he is, number 82. Now watch the collision, and that's why McDaniels is on the sideline. Jim Nelson replaces him. Nelson, number 56, at outside linebacker. And this is Allstock making the catch, rumbling all the way to the 26-yard line. First down, Tampa. You know, when you're as big as 
is all start the uh, defensive backs and linebackers have to be concerned when he's out in the open field it's got a head of steam we just saw him take out Ed McDaniel or Hape rather look at the move right there he made three guys miss and then it takes four or five more to get him down and he leaves a trail of broken bread come out of the backfield he's carried four times tonight that's his first reception he comes out of the game gun is in 26 yard line first down You know, we're always cautioning about making too much of an early season game. But the Buccaneers with Super Bowl aspirations lose tonight two and a half back. So you're really looking at a wild card. Maybe you get lucky. Here's the rump cam to look at the last play again. Shows you some of the uh, how difficult it is to find a five foot eight Warwick Dunn as he comes out from behind that huge offensive line. But Dan, it's Again, with Tony Dungy, more than anybody in this building, knows how big this game is. Well, if they lose the game, they go three down in the loss column. They can't afford to fall back that far this early. Second down and six. Sack avoided by King. And he runs out of bounds at the 21-yard line, about four yards shy of the first down. Yeah, but if they do go to three games down in the loss column, Going into the second half of the season, there's nobody I'd rather circle the wagons around than Tony Dungy. The guy has such a contemplative demeanor. You know he's going to be calm in the eye of the storm, and I think it'll translate to his team. He always is. And we're really seeing the extra effort by the Buccaneers. Sean King pulling away from defensive end John Burrow that time. All stopped with the play earlier, and uh, Hape knocking out a linebacker. So you can see just how important the Bucks feel this game is and how much their effort is picked up. Meanwhile, Tampa Bay with alacrity getting to the line of scrimmage because the play clock says three. They're all messed up and they have to take a timeout. They brought in all new personnel. This is a big play coming up for Tampa Bay, third down and five, and they have to take a timeout. Play clock was down to one. 2.26 left in the third. Seven point Viking lead. Hey, do you want to make out over by the fountain? Yeah, sure, Norm. See you Friday, 9, 8 Central on ABC. Aerial facilities provided by Goodyear Tires. A look at Minneapolis, sparkling October night. Temperature today got up into the mid-60s outside. Wow. <laughs> and Barbara Billingsley as June Cleavage. <laughs> third, third down. A short five as King, after the timeout, throws, and it is incomplete, but there's a flag. There Keyshawn said, I was tripped. Kenny Wright got a finger on him and a little bit more, and there's a flag thrown. Kenny Wright was clawing at the back of number 19, because if he doesn't, Keyshawn makes that catch for a touchdown. Sean King getting battered in the pocket. Here is Keyshawn, 19. Watch this shot first. It's Chris Hovan. Ow, and that hurts when the back of the head hits that Astro turf. Watch this matchup right here. Good move to get to the outside. Now the hands of Kenny Wright and the trip. Pass interference. Defense number 20. Automatic. First down. Well, they're giving, Key, giving Keyshawn his props there. You get down in the red zone, you owe it to him. You brought him over from two first-rounders. You got to throw it to him at an integral time. First down, goal at the four, Melissa. Al, before this drive, Keyshawn Johnson was huddled up on the sideline with Sean King and quarterback's coach Clyde Christensen on the sideline. He looked like he was pleading his case to get the ball. Very emphatic. He was actually asking for that exact kind of play over the shoulder. Well, you got Jack has Green with 11 catches and Keyshawn Johnson with three. You know Keyshawn isn't going to be happy being overlooked for another 5'9 receiver down here. Right now, Tony Dungy could care less. All he cares about is getting the ball into the end zone and tying this game. The ball is spotted at the two. First and goal. A lot of weapons for Sean King. Keyshawn's one of them at six foot four. Mike Allstock, the sole back in this set. From the two, he starts Johnson in motion, does King. And it's Allstock. And they're getting forward progress. 
He was hit first by Chris Ovan, the rookie, making his mark tonight. Well, that's what you got to do with Allstott. You got to bring the whole scrum and be ready for him to bounce outside. And that's why Talance Sawyer was standing around looking for him. First the yard play, loss. First the play by Hovan and John Randall as he takes the inside. And there's Sawyer and Robert Griffin and Robert Tate all looking for Allstott to bounce it outside as he has done so many times. Boy, Talon Sawyer has played himself a nice game tonight. We're calling that name a lot. Second down goal after a three yard loss. Dunn is in the game. Play clock is down to three. Late again. They get it off at one. They give it to Dunn. Spin move. He gets back to the two. So a third and two now with a minute and a half in the third quarter. Third and goal. And Sean King is pleading with the coaches to get the play in sooner. It just ruins the timing of the play to have to wait and wait and wait to get the play in. You get up to the line of scrimmage. You rush. Les Steckel is always had this problem especially the Super Bowl last year when Steve McNair had to use timeouts because plays were too late coming in. Well they've taken a timeout on this drive. They ran the last play with one second. Now it's third down and goal. Ten seconds on the play clock. And flags before the snap. Procedure before the snap. Patrick Hape I think was the man moving. And a, a late flag just came in. The Buccaneers had a false start. And then Sean King didn't like the way he was treated, but it was really so loud, I'm sure the defensive line couldn't hear the whistle. Looks There's like Hape moving. Patrick Hape moved. Patrick Hape moves, and now the whistle blows, but I'm not sure Hovan could hear it. He knows he's got a free shot on the quarterback, and now King gets up and argues with the officials. Well, they're cranking this Viking horn up here so I'm pretty sure nobody could hear the whistle at all. The horn of plenty. Huh? Things are heating up on the fjord, boys. Yeah, that might got that might get King a, a penalty right there. Throwing the ball down. And that's what it is. That got him the penalty. False start. Offense number 82. The penalty is declined. Unsportsmanlike conduct taunting number 10. Threw a ball out of player hole on the ground. 15-yard penalty remains third down. It's all part of the frustration that Sean King is feeling. First of all, he has to call a timeout because the play's in late. Then they run a play with the clock running down. Then they have a lot of time, but they're all discombobulated up front. Hape jumps off sides. King takes a shot, and this is the reaction. It's a very normal reaction from a frustrated young quarterback. Everything worked out perfectly for the Vikings. And you know what? D Dungy's pleading the case that the defensive lineman didn't hear the whistle. And that the reason that Sean did what he did was because he felt that the penalty should have been against the other guy. Right. But it wasn't. It wasn't. Because so, the, the, the players couldn't hear the whistle, and King lost his poise. And so it's third down and goal from the 17-yard line. You know, some you know, never supposed to lose your poise, but sometimes you understand it. Kid felt he got hit illegally. No question. I've been there. Five receivers. King to the end zone and no flag. Intended for Warwick Dunn, who was lined up in the slot, covered on the play by Keith Thibodeau. There is no face guarding in the National Football. So they go from first and goal at the two to a 35 yard field goal attempt. Boy, that is a beautiful play by Keith Thibodeau on Warwick Dunn. Never looked back for the ball, but did not make contact with Dunn until the ball had gone by. Martin Gramatica now from 35 yards away, and that's good, but still two yards away from tying it. And then they wind up still four points down with 44 seconds remaining in the third quarter. What well, we've been talking about, Keyshawn Johnson, the frustration he's exhibited the past couple of weeks. Here's what Sean King had to say about it. 
Well, I think he's frustrated because we aren't winning. I don't think he's so he's frustrated that necessarily he isn't getting the ball because, you know, first three games we won and he wasn't catching 10 balls a game, but we're winning, so it's a lot easier, you know, to take. And uh, I think there's a lot of frustration, you know, from the guys. But I also think there's a realism that, you know, we are putting in a brand new offense. I mean, we have, you know, 11 guys who had never played together before this year. So, you know, these kind of things happen with that. I mean, there'll be a couple games in there where you don't play up to your ability, but. You know, the good teams are able to back back, and I think we're a good teams, so we'll be fine. King talking about Johnson and John Randall in Sean King's ear. Now, that is taunting as well. Where's the flag on that? You yeah. can't walk up to a guy and shake your fist like that. Where's the official? You know, you give it to Sean King, and then the very next play, John Randall's in his face. You could see halfway through throwing it, King was thinking, I shouldn't do this. He almost just dropped it on him. Randall asserting himself there in his face. 20 to 16 Vikings as Gramatica's kick taken at the one yard line by Tyrone Parker. And he brings it back out to the 30 yard line. This frustration is coming to the surface here. A lot of extracurriculars. Corey Withrow, number 60, and Jeff Gooch of Tampa Bay, number 50, getting into it. They're both lucky they didn't get a penalty on this play. Here's the return by Carter, the tackle by Stecker, and then the uh, right hand by Gooch. And now Corey Withrow is going to come right back with a little jab of his own. So the only guy to be penalized in the last five minutes is Sean Kick. I'm and sure he's thinking, come on. There's Cole Pepper tonight. He's only thrown the ball 11 times. 123 yards. He takes over at the 30 yard line and begins this drive on the ground with Robert Smith picking up four on what figures to be the final play of the third quarter. So the Minnesota Vikings coming in with a mark of 4 0. Shidi Ahanatu, a little slow in getting back up. As you can see the Vikes in the first half 167 yards but only 37 here in the second half as the Bucks have closed the gap end of three Vikings 20 Buccaneers 16 and Monday night football from Minneapolis returns after this message from our ABC stations. History says the Titans have the Jaguars number. Will McNair and Tennessee inflict more pain or can Jacksonville break the spell? Redemption or humiliation? Monday Night Football, next week at 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific. Flush with the success of their 1999 hit Ultimate Cheeseburger, JT, EJ, TJ, TK, and the other EJ return to the studio to produce $1.99 for a limited time. $1.99 for a limited time. It's so meat and cheesy. Uh, uh. Ultimate cheeseburger. It's just a buck ninety-nine. Can we fix that? At Gene Enterprises, we've harnessed the power of the human gene so you can say goodbye to your allergies forever with new. Order begins. Minnesota has the ball out of the shotgun. Second down and six from the 34-yard line, and we've got flags before the snap. False start, illegal snap, number 78 offense. Five yard penalty, remains second down. Reminder on ESPN Sports Center after the game. All the highlights and today's sports news. And Denny Green's got to be concerned about his offense. Remember the series before this, it was three pass plays that Culpepper couldn't get off. Now this next series, they run one and then they give back the yards they gain on first down with that penalty there. the 30 yard line second down 11 inside handoff to Robert Smith and that's a nice play getting a hand on him in the bottom of the pile I believe that was a Honda two and even though the uh, Buccaneers are trailing by four points as we start this fourth quarter some question as to who has the ball you take a look at these stats and you can see that the Buccaneers are dominating this football game the passing yards the total yards but the reason they're dominating is if you look at the time of possession 
on third downs Tampa Bay has been able to uh, convert on seven of eleven while the Vikings are only one of six on third down. And here's another third down play for them at the 30 yard line third down and ten. Blitz look out down he goes big sack back at the 16 and it's Warren Sapp. They may change the name of the term for tackling the quarterback to sapping the quarterback. <laughs> Warren with another one. Here he is, just relentless. He's got all the physical tools that you want in a defensive tackle. NFL Defensive Player of the Year last year, and that's five times now that the Bucks have got Culpepper down. Not an easy task. Well, the thing, like you said earlier about Sepp, you just have to keep blocking until the whistle blows. Flag down. That was the, the Sapp for Sapp is seven, seventh and a half of the season. That's Andre Hastings. Brings it back to the 42, loses the ball. Remember, a flag was thrown at the snap at the line of scrimmage. Vikings are sure they have it. Initial but, indication is they have it. Dwayne Rudd ripped it loose. He went for the ball and not the tackle, and he got the ball. Now the question is, what's this all about? At the snap, there are two of them. One thrown by the line judge, the other by the head linesman. Offside, defense, the penalty is declined. It's only a play, fumble, recovery, first down. Another monster penalty against the Bucks. Monster penalty, lining up in the neutral zone, and then a monster turnover. After a very clean third quarter, the Bucks start the fourth quarter with a huge fumble. Look at this move right there. Jumping offside before the ball is snapped. That's a pretty good shot from the blimp cam through the roof. Well, it's got to be devastating for a uh, defense just to get off the field, about to take a blow. You're right back in the fray. Well, and they've been controlling the game. They've been in control of the offensive and defensive lines right now. And the Bucs, Tony Dungy knows all too well. They have Carl Williams, one of the best run back men in the league, but he's hurt. And Andre Hastings is taking Williams' spot, and this is the first game for which Hastings has been active this season. And he just put it on the ground. First down, Minnesota at the 39 yard line. Robert Smith banged down at the line of scrimmage by Steve White. What a shot by Steve White. All these guys seem like. They're clones of Warren Sapp. Not real tall, but great lower centers of gravity and tremendous quickness. Watch from the right side here, right in here, look at the speed of White to get inside the block and drill Smith. Well, could you imagine that would, anything that would hurt a defensive lineman than to have Warren Sapp look over disdainfully at you? He brings them all up to his level. They're afraid they'll not play that hard. Second and 11. Field tackle at the 34-yard line made by Derek Brooks, setting up a third and five. And it really is a, a, a total team concept on defense. It's a classic four-man rush, and then great speed in your linebackers and Brooks and Quarles and Nate Webster, and then a very hard-hitting pair of safeties in Robinson and Lynch. That's why the Buccaneers are so good on defense. They're on a pace for 70 sacks. They've never had more than 44 in a season, and they don't blitz much. So you know they're getting a big push from that front four. It's ideal. Third and five at the 34-yard line. Ball Pepper throws. Dropped by Moss. So Randy's been pretty quiet now for about a quarter and a half. On a slant, can't make the catch. And now they're going to try to kick the field goal. They're looking at about 52 yards. And Sapp is right in Moss's face. If he makes his catch, it's going to be close to picking up the first down. Ball is thrown a little bit off target, a little bit behind him. But Randy Moss makes that catch all the time. And now Sapp right here. I think Warren's telling him that Sapp is further up the tree than Moss. <laughs> <laughs> Now Anderson to attempt a 52-yarder. Moss tonight, two catches, and they came on successive plays in the first half. That is blocked. Oh, 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 picked oh, up on oh, the oh, run by Donnie Abraham. Touchdown, Tampa. No flags. Huge block. Abraham runs it in to give Tampa the lead. Again, it's 
it's a long kick so that means Anderson has to drive it. He can't afford to get it up in the air as fast as he'd like. Look at Warren Sapp blocks another field goal after getting one big one against the Redskins last week. None bigger than this one as Abraham takes it the distance. Sapp is a constant in nature. He's awesome. So Abraham scores. Martin kicks the extra point. What about John? Talking about a deflated Metrodome here. Watch out for that roof. 12-13 left in regulation. Talk about a defense taking over a ball game. Outstanding three series now for Tampa Bay, topped off by that block. It took 47 minutes and 47 seconds, but Tampa Bay finally has its first lead of the night. Just Jax the, Titans next Monday night. Just to lend a little quick perspective before this next series, Warren Sapp's the best defensive player in the universe. From the five-yard line, Tyrone Parker. Up to the 27-yard line. You know, and Warren Sapp is only six feet two, but he's a great athlete. Okay. Look at the push. That's the key. He split Dixon and Mitch Palmer, the snapper, and got between the two of them and got his left hand up high enough to block that low kick of Gary Anderson. You know, Tampa Bay's defense is so good, I think they could hold St. Louis to 35. <laughs> we will find out, won't we? That's right. We have that Tampa-St. Louis game the next to last Monday of the season. Late December. feed off it man. Well they lured him into making an audible at the line of scrimmage and when he changed the play the Buccaneers changed their defense. Culpepper came out looking for the quick throw had nothing kind of panicked rolled out didn't throw the ball away lost about four yards. Minnesota's second half possessions scored only three points. 300 or more yards in each of 19 games. That's a year plus three games. But right now tonight, only 194 yeah. yards, and they've suffered six sacks. Second and 14. <laughs> Underneath, Matthew Hatchett. Meanwhile, you know, we saw Randy Moss stand involved in the play on the last series, but it's hard to believe tonight Randy Moss coming off that tremendous game last week at Detroit. Two catches on back-to-back -back plays. And last year in Tampa, Randy Moss got exactly two passes in that game. So obviously this defense has figured out a way to stop Randy Moss, where almost no defense in the league has been able to. Third down and 10 from the 27-yard line. And they go to Moss. He makes his third catch of the night and seeks the first down and I think has it with a good shoulder lean to the 38 yard line. They can't stop him forever. That was really a heads up play by Moss too. Because when he caught the ball he was a little bit short of the first down. He's got oh, such a great explosion <laughs> getting inside of Abraham there and then the lean to pick up the first down. That's an all pro play by Moss. And you don't have to put it on Moss and Carter's numbers. You just got to get it near him. These guys might as well be playing with butterfly nets. First down at the 39 yard line for the Minnesota Vikings. 10-15. And Robert Smith puts it on the ground, and that's a time to stop the presses. Derek Brooks is there, but it's recovered by Smith. Well, you can appreciate somebody like Moss, Dan, because you had a pretty good uh, receiver in your day, one John Jefferson. John Jefferson made a lot of great catches. I just want people to remember just how good J.J. was. Didn't play with him for long, but he sure bailed me out a number of times. One-handed, and he just likes to catch the point of the ball a lot of the time. Boy, he, now, did really, you, he really did help. Did you even take credit for those three touchdowns? <laughs> you bet you. Second and 11. Culpepper throws, and that's caught at the 42-yard line by Chris Carter. And he's had a pretty silent night. That's only his second catch of the game. 
That's a big catch for Carter, though, isn't it? Ties him with Andre Reed. Of course, Reed is still active in Washington, second most all time. Jerry Rice naturally leads the list. You can see the Buccaneers are playing a zone defense. They want to force Culpepper into some type of mistake, but he did a nice job of staying with Carter and giving him a ball and picking up the first down. Let's see, within a couple hundred of Rice now. First down and 10 from the 43 yard line as Culpepper goes deep for Randy Moss. And Moss in the end zone makes the catch. Touchdown, Viking. that they forget to attack the ball when it's in the air. Donnie Abraham had position. He just did not make the play on the ball. Same thing happened in Pontiac last week. Anderson for the point after. So Moss was pretty quiet for a while, but not now. McCombs' his team up again. Ray team. Do you think he's good looking? Man's delicious. America's coolest bad boy. Charlie, what did you say your last name was again? Whoa, let's not rush things. Charlie Sheen rocks Spin City. You know sports? Yes. I also drink beer and play poker. I'm just a tattoo away from being your dream girl. It's the season premiere. Usually I have to date a woman before she treats me this way. Spin City, ABC Wednesday, October 18th. Randy Moss. Prime time, fringe time, any time. Seven TD catches in five games on Monday night. The Vikings on that drive, Culpepper four of four. And we started that drive by talking about the fact that Moss had been silent, Carter had been pretty silent, and they both were big factors. Moss was just waiting for the green light from you, Albino. <laughs> Stecker back to receive the kick. Burgers kick. Stecker out past the 10. Good tackle up at the 18-yard line by Chris Walsh. One of the gunners. All right, back to the Moss touchdown. Well, John Lynch told me that uh, he thinks the teams defend Randy Moss differently because they're so in awe of his speed and his athletic ability. Look at the position Donnie Abraham had on him. With the left hand, he's got to make a decision whether to go for the ball or take out Moss. He doesn't do either. Sherman Lewis, their offensive coordinator, says this guy, and he's seen some great ones working in San Francisco with Rice and in Green Bay. The Moss. ball is juggled. Moss makes the catch, even though John Lynch is coming over trying to take his head off. Moss, some very subtle work with the left hand there to keep the DB off him. From the 18, all stuck. Meanwhile, what was Culpepper doing when Moss was making that catch? Here was his seat. He's absorbing a huge hit from Brian Kelly, who is coming a little bit too late on the corner blitz. Culpepper knows that he's thrown to a special guy, and that special guy came through again. You know, you know to, to me, Dan, Moss makes the football look as if it weighs about a tenth of an ounce. You know, his hands are so great, his timing, his use of his body. Like Dennis said, he held the guy off with his left hand. Second and one. And Dunn gets the first down. I mean, he almost makes it look as if it's a styrofoam football. It, it, it really, I mean, I think that's the uh, the beauty of his athleticism is that uh, time stands still, the ball kind of just hangs in the air. It's his ball, no matter if there's one or two defensive backs around him. See, if I'm Steckel here, I'm going to Keyshawn Johnson because, you know, Keyshawn's thinking mano a mano with Moss. He just saw what he did. He wants to light it up. He'll do everything in his power to get open. First and 10 from the 31 yard. by Kylie Wong. Warwick Dunn would be my plan B, of course. <laughs> Not a bad plan B. 
We got Mr. Inside and Mr. Outside, and here Dunn gets to the outside. Shows that flash. Kylie Wong, 10 yards down the field with the tackle. Watch the quickness. They got great vision, these great running backs do. That's a super job of blocking by that offensive line. From the 44, Olsen is the setback. King for Johnson, who adjusts and can't make the catch. He got position on Chris Dishman, who hung with him and helped to break up the play. Dishman, 13th year in the league. He's really helped out Robert Tate a lot too. The uh, converted wide receiver playing defensive back on the other side of the field. He's constantly asking Dishman for advice. Dishman still has it 13 years into the game. Don in the backfield behind King on second and ten. Over the middle reaching for it is Keyshawn to make the catch. Uh, short of the first down from where we stand. Well, good spot, for Steckel. Spotted at the 47-yard line. Look at that block by Warwick Dunn on Robert Griffin. Just laid him out on the safety blitz. That's why that pass was complete. Little that, Warwick Dunn. Now Keyshawn with a good adjustment on this ball. Secures the catch before Thibodeau can get to him. Close enough to measure. They're bringing the change in. I love to watch uh, Sean King compete. We see him get fired up a little bit in this ball game. Remember what a great job he did last week against the Redskins, rallying the team. Hard line. All start. All start. Oh, yeah. Stop by Tony Williams. T-bone. And now I'm not saying you're compelled to go for it, but you almost have to. I don't know. I, with this defense, I would rather punt and, and let my defense get back on the field here. Yeah, I'm not sure they can. They have the quickness. The Vikings are just too quick up front for Allstott. Well, they're going Jenny to go Randall here, Al. They're going to go for it on fourth down. John Willard. I rescue alligators for I'll tell you, but here's a clue. We let Timothy Leary babysit for you. <laughs> the big premiere is tomorrow on ABC. That was only the second pass of Mike Allstott's career. They got the playoff with a half second on the play clock. Tampa Bay has been accused of being very conservative offensively. They were anything but. But right now, Minnesota has the lead in the ball near midfield, and they will try to chew up the clock with Robert Smith banging his way across the 50 to the 47 yard line. You really do have to love the call because it was the right call. It's just that a play like that takes a long time to call in the huddle. Uh, an example would be uh, I right fake 48 toss halfback throwback. It's not like getting up the line of scrimmage saying I right 48 toss. It takes too long. It you took a to play in sooner. It took a long time and also it took a few seconds for the bench to decide are we going to punt because you and I had discussed whether it's a no brainer or not. They could have punted a lot of time left and their timeouts as well and they opted to go for it. This is Paul Pepper throwing and that is pulled in at the 37 yard line. Great catch by Chris Carter. He was inbound. When the Bucks 
threw a, a halfback pass. Well, two weeks ago, they lived a nightmare, of course, in the Jets game. That was Keyshawn's only catch of the game, and you know the way it ended. Curtis Martin to Wayne Krabat, and that jersey was a, on the back of Dennis Miller, as the night scene said right there. And that's what beat Tampa Bay a couple of weeks ago. I love the way that Allstott was trying to put English on the ball after he delivered it. This is Robert Smith picking up two. Damian Robinson makes the tackle. What we got here, boys? Let me take a breath. 27, 23, 4, 10 left. Okay. And just going to get the lay of the land. Two timeouts for both teams, Dennis. So if the, the Bucks can stop the Vikings here at this part of the field, I would doubt that the Vikings would try a long field goal again. Well, the last time Anderson tried a 52 yarder, Abraham ran it back in after the sap block for a touchdown. Blitz, second and nine. Moss back in the picture. Oh. And gets pinballed down at the 23, but not until he picks up a big first down. Well, Randy went away for a while, but it's money time. <laughs> what happened to the big guys? He hurt? Check in with Melissa Stark. Well, you've seen Dante Culpepper's poise under pressure tonight. Well, it should come as no surprise. He's dealt with pressure since day one. He was born to a woman in prison in Miami. She was an unwed teenager in prison for armed robbery. Then he was adopted by a woman named Emma Thompson. She was 62 years old at the time, had already raised 14 children by herself, none her own. He said he owes everything to Emma. And when he got his NFL contract, one of the first things he did with the money he realized a lifelong dream. He bought Emma a house. And Al, he's happy to say that her neighbors are nothing but doctors and lawyers. And right now, her very proud son is on the verge of leading his team to a 5-0 and record. He, like John Lynch, a baseball draftee, opted for football. Right now, 15 of 19 tonight. Second down and four. Sack can only look on. And the clock is ticking down. And remember, Tampa Bay has two timeouts, which they'll have to take on defense, plus the two-minute warning. Well, Pepper, after milking the clock, gives it to Smith. He picks up the first down. And now it's just about impossible for Tampa Bay as he takes it to the nine-yard line. And that takes us to the two-minute warning. So it'll be first and goal when we come back. Two Joe! No, I'm not. The Gina Davis Show premieres tomorrow on ABC. Monday Night Football is being brought to you by Bud Light for the great taste that won't fill you up and never lets you down. Make it a Bud Light. State Farm Insurance, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Lexus and the all-new LS430. Imagine how you'll feel driving it. And Capital One. Capital One, what's in your wallet? Where was the crew pushing in from there, Al? The loop. St. Cloud, Edina, first and goal from the 10. This is Robert Smith who threw that block on Sapp, and now Tampa Bay has to take a timeout. You know, we saw Red McCombs, who bought this team three years ago. Red has owned a couple of basketball teams. He owned the San Antonio Spurs. He owned the Denver Nuggets. He's on minor league baseball teams. There he is, he and his wife Charlene, about ready to celebrate their 50th wedding anniversary. It's a seven point game. They'll get it back without a timeout, but still obviously in the game. Second and goal. Fake to Smith. Cole Pepper can only take it to the two. And now a timeout is called. Anthony McFarland stops him. And you know what, Dan? It's their last timeout. I'm not sure. I don't run a play here and, and eschew the field goal. What do you think? Well, I like uh, having to defend 99 or 98 yards. Why not? Uh, Culpepper really takes a lick here, too. McFarland's going to jump on his back. Culpepper carries him about three yards, and then they run into Nate Webster. But why not go for it here, it's, Al? It's a little premature at this point because it's still, it's only third down, so they still have one more play. But the point I'm making is. If you don't get into the end zone here, I'm not I'm not sure I wouldn't run the fourth down play. Uh, the worst thing that can happen 
because you don't make it. Tampa Bay gets the ball 98 yards away. And it's one of my favorite stories. When McCombs went home, and they live in San Antonio, he and Charlie and his wife to his side there, and he went home one night and he said, honey, I'm going to buy the Minnesota Vikings. And she says, are you crazy? And he says, no, I'm 70. <laughs> I've always wanted a football team. <laughs> <laughs> now he's got a pretty good one, too. Hey, when he was 30 years old, he was the youngest Edsel dealer in the country. Oh, to come back from that shows a survivor's spirit. Rush Limbaugh, his guest. Third down and goal from the two. And Smith gets taken down by Derek Brooks. So now we will see what Dennis Green, and I think you just saw him mouth go for it. So he's thinking the same way we are. It's not as if it's not as if Tampa. Sap wants back in. It's not as if Tampa. It's not as if Tampa can take the lead with a field goal or tie the game. They're going to take time out with one second left here. Run the play clock all the way down. And then we'll see what Green's and he, he just, decision he just will be. Just mouth the words. Do we have a play? So. The, they're either going to go with their very best goal line play here or he's going to kick the field goal. And obviously he didn't like the choice of play so you're going to send Gary Anderson out. So they'll make it seven instead of four. And the thing about Anderson we talked about all the points he scored in his career. He knows the most important thing here is just get the ball up real quick. You know I, I, I don't I don't like this call only because they, they're going to have to kick off. You don't know what can happen on the kickoff. Tampa Bay is clearly going to have the ball more upfield than they would if they didn't score the touchdown here. And so then why not try a fake field goal here? Right. Could be. Yeah. Just remember what happened last time they tried a field goal. Yeah, that was a little bit different. It was a 52 yarder or so. And Warren Sapp got his left hand on it. And Donnie Abraham took it to the house. Well, clearly they're not worried about Tampa Bay running the kickback for a touchdown since when we started the <laughs> night, we mentioned that in the history of the team, they haven't had. A kickoff return for a touchdown. The field goal is good. There's always a first time. Right. The odds are in their favor of <laughs> running one back, don't you think? 30 to 23 now. The Vikings up by seven. Keyshawn's coming back in in a minute. We can tell you that tomorrow, as the violence continues, Ted Koppel is in Jerusalem for a nightline town meeting. Israelis. Palestinians face to face is their hope for peace. That's tomorrow night with Ted Koppel reporting from Jerusalem on Nightline. All right, I don't know about you, but I'd put Sap in at fullback. <laughs> <laughs> I'd put Sap I'm in thinking. to run the kickback. That's what I'm thinking. Tell you, if, he, if, he, uh, if he could, if he could volunteer, I bet he'd go for it too. I wouldn't want to have to tackle him. Talking about a tall order for a not a very tall quarterback. Sean King's not going to have any timeouts, and he's got to get it in the end zone. Next week, we go to the Adelphia Coliseum. We'll be in Nashville, 9 o'clock Eastern time. The Jaguars have lost three straight. Must win for them. Eddie George, another tremendous day yesterday against Cincinnati, one of the premier running backs in the league. Great rivalry, Jacksonville, Tennessee, next Monday night. Yesterday, Brunel wound up coming out of the game. Today, Tom Coughlin kind of hedged at 12 o'clock as to what he was going to do at quarterback, and then the Jags announced later in the afternoon that it will be Brunel starting next week. Do you think Tom Coughlin's tightening the screws and tape down in Jacksonville? Paris Island's looking good. Here's Berger's kick. A yard into the end zone. Aaron Stecker coming back with it. Dante Culpepper on the verge right now of winning his first five starts in his National Football League career. And he joins these guys. As you can see, Mike Tomzak, if they win, Mike Tomzak with a record, won his first 10 in 1986 for Mike Ditka's Bears and the other guys as well. Hostetler and Kurt Warner, the last to do it, with six straight wins at the beginning of 
Lezak was his coach at University of Central Florida to call toughness. That pass is incomplete, intended for Warwick Dunn. Talk about a night for Culpepper. Remember the first play of the game on offense, he ran it in. And so far, he's only missed four passes all night. To Green when he took Randy Moss. And hit him one of the time. Second and ten. Oh, fucking trailer to Dunn. And Dunn down the sideline gets pushed out of bounds by number 52, Kylie Wong, at about the 40-yard line. I'll bet you that play was suggested by Tampa Bay assistant coach Tony Nathan. Who knows the hook and ladder well, Dan? All right. Yeah, I know it too, Dennis. Uh, he did it against my Chargers in a playoff game in Miami. Uriel Harris lateraled it to Tony Nathan. There he is, right there. His play worked perfectly. You know, Tony had a big hand in this one. And there it was Don Strock in the great game with Dan and Kellen Winslow. But there was the hook and trailer here now at the 47-yard line on first down. A flag is thrown. Minnesota may have been offside, and in fact, the play was whistled dead before the inception. No, it is illegal procedure. They were offside because they were induced. Ironically, on that tab of the snap, called start. Offense, number 79. Five yard penalty remains first down. On the defensive side of the ball, only hope that his offense can move the ball some 52 yards in 40 seconds without a timeout. It's first and 15. King to Johnson, reaches back, trying to get out of bounds, can't. Clock keeps rolling, 36-yard line. Now King wants to bring him to the line of scrimmage and spike it. If he's going to do that, get up there as quickly as he can. And he does here with 21 seconds remaining. But now they're in position with a guy like Keyshawn Johnson to throw the ball into the end zone on an alley-oop. They may be able to play, have one more play to get a little bit closer, but at least they're in range now. Johnson catches this ball over the middle with a great catch reaching behind him, showing the type of player that he is, making plays when his team needs it the most. At the 36. Showtime. 21 seconds out of the gun, five receivers in the set. at the seven yard line. This is a great pass by Sean King and a heck of an effort by Keyshawn, but the hit by Thomas is just too much. Perfectly timed, and Johnson just can't keep the ball in his hands. Oh, he almost held it. Look at, oh, great hit, great hit. I like the route, a little corner route. Beautiful throw by Sean King. Just a tad late. NFL play by Dennis play. Dennis Miller brings a welcome dimension to the game. Finally, the fan has a voice in the booth. There's little question, MNF is an event again. Monday Night Football, it's powerful stuff.
Minnesota wins it 30 to 23 the Verizon play of the game we go back to the very last play here and look at how close this actually is it is up to the officials upstairs to review it what you have is the ball coming down Robert Tate it hit his foot there is Jack West Green almost coming up with the ball but it bounces off the ground but it was that close and that's why you saw Warren Sapp looking upstairs the league looked at it the guys upstairs did and said they weren't going to review it as it turns out right call here's Melissa all right now Randy last week you told Dante Culpepper trust me just throw me the ball no matter what on that fourth quarter touchdown pass to regain the lead did you ask for the ball but not really. They gave us the defense that we wanted. And, you know, we was kind of in bind. We were down. You know, I just told our guys, man, just bite your lip. Let's stay together as a team, man. Let's try to make it happen. You know, our offensive line played a hell of a game, you know, keeping that defense out of there. You know, gave Dante a little bit of time in the second half to find me and Chris, you know, when given the opportunity. Chris came up with some big plays. Robert Smith came up with some big runs. You know, we just made it happen tonight. Congratulations, Randy. Thank you. Let's go over to Eric. Go with Dante Culpepper. Dante seemed like the Buccaneers missed a lot more in the second half. Yeah, they did do that. You know, they changed a little something. They, they wanted to bring bring the heat the second half. They did a good job of bringing it. Defensive line stepped up and played a lot better the second half. I got to give them a lot of credit. They're a good team. Thank you. Back to you, Al. All right, Eric. So the Tampa Bay Buccaneers come up a little short tonight. They've now lost three straight. They go to three and three. They're two and a half games back of the undefeated Minnesota Vikings. As we head to Nashville next week, the Titans and the Jaguars. On the East Coast, your late local news next on the West Coast 2020 downtown. ABC Sports is online at ESPN.com. And this has been a presentation of ABC Sports continuing the tradition of excellence with another wild Monday night game. ABC Sports thanks you for watching this presentation of the National Football League. Promotional consideration provided by National Car Rental, the official car rental company of the National Football League. Let's go! ABC Tuesday, television's most anticipated new drama. I'm sorry your patient's going to die. Never. Premiering without commercial interruption. Hang in there, kid. I'm not asking you. I'm telling you. The show that's already the critic's choice. Excellent, riveting, and exhilarating. I go to war for all these people, and the only thing I ask is that you stick with me. Gideon's Crossing, with a special premiere brought to you without commercial interruption by Johnson & Johnson. Tuesday at 10, 9 central on ABC. On Como 4 News Prime Time, they cleaned up the White Sox. Now the Mariners are getting ready to take on the Yankees. And we'll show you new technology that will change the way you watch a football game. Como 4 News Prime Time, coming up.